the, your last statement on this whole situation is I'm not a groomer, I'm just a loser. Yeah. You're wild for that. Yeah, yeah. You're wild. Wild. Very incorrect. No time. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. These are good vibes today, you guys. You don't want to miss this episode of Judge Trish because we are already, the vibes are immaculate. It is just Trish. No, it's not just Trish today. We have a co-host, Oscar, <laughs> who's also editor, producer, really our only other crew member, which is wonderful. I love our little crew, though. I Between love it the three too. of us, it's like, we get it done over here. I know. We really do. It's amazing. I know for next week for Thanksgiving, I'm going to have everyone compile things they're thankful for, meaning us three, things we're thankful for. <laughs> And I already was like, Oscar's at the top of my list. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, I know you randomly tweeted. <laughs> oh, well, that day I felt so bad. Oh, I was no. being so annoying. You were not. And oh I was like, God. delayed in paying you. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to tweet Oscar. Because you. I also was like, can you edit this? Can you do I, I just don't, I, I just don't want to be that person. Because you do so much already. And I never want to be that annoying person where I was like, oh God, trash, you know. You literally are not. Like, really? You, you randomly, no, you always ask for little things. And then you act like, <laughs> in your head, they're so big. I'm like, it's no big. I hate <laughs> I hate asking. Like, I'm someone who, like, never... It's like, if they bring me wrong food, like, I'll just eat the wrong food. Like, I don't want to, like, correct it. I don't want like inconvenience. Yeah, I just don't like it. And so since you're already doing it, I'm like... I don't know, but this is like just Trish. I'm so like, I told you, it's like all we like do and like think about. And I know you have like other things going on, but this is like our full time thing. So I'm just like, okay, it needs to be this and this and, you know, and we're figuring it all out and stuff like that. But I always, and then I tweeted, I was just like, you're just like the best. And I meant it. I was just like, <laughs> so I you're randomly so scroll because I, I never check my mentions. I never no. check my uh, messages. I'm always afraid someone's yelling at me about something. I've had this fear for like years. <laughs> I don't Twitter? know why. Yeah. <laughs> so I never check anything and I'm randomly just scrolling through and seeing that. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sweet as. <laughs> Do other people, will you see other people like replying? Like if I wrote that and someone else is like at Oscar, like will you see that or no? No. A lot of people love you. Oh, really? You I need to read so it. Sca- you know, I assume the worst always. I'm always like someone's going to be upset about something. So I'm just never going to look. Really? I, I guess I should start. Maybe. I well, don't know. <laughs> Twitter is very crazy. Like it is kind of like for a while. I was like this is a toxic place. But I actually love it now. Like I don't know. Maybe it's like I'm only. I don't know. Like for some reason, either people completely disappeared like haters or like. They have me blocked. I think for a while, for a minute, like they had me blocked. I don't know. It's fuck, it's weird. It's so bizarre. But they would like block me, and I was like, that's so. Anyways, it's great because I see nothing. I never see like an ounce of hate. So if it's out there, I don't see it. Which is kind of like if you don't see it, I feel like it doesn't exist. So right now, I just see all positive stuff on X and Twitter and social media, and I love it so much. It's like oh, so. Positive. And you're getting all your tea there too. You're <laughs> you're manifesting interviews there. So <sighs> that's how I feel like I'm gonna get it. I know we have so many with the Grammy nominations coming out. I was just like, these are all our dream guests being nominated we have olivia <laughs> rodrigo we have ice spice we have troy savan i'm like oh my god wait these are all people we love right are all those people nominated yes. okay yeah <laughs> i was just like those are all our dream Maybe guests we'll be at the grammys we'll be our little platform at the grammys how do we get that oscar <laughs> you know how to get that you're in mainstream media how do we do it how do we get to be next to et right there <laughs> with can the, you imagine with, <laughs> <laughs> with my microphone <laughs> Moses is doing sound. You almost see that you have the tea. So. Right. We have tea and the tea. I have the tea and the tea. I just put mine over there. With a little pink platform on the red carpet. That'd be ah, everything. Yes. How do we get that? Do you know how? Or are you just saying because I'm going to be competition with E.T.? <laughs> ET will share the interviews. <laughs> you see some events and like there's really random outlets that you never hear yeah, in your life the and they're just there with like the little microphone. So I think some events are probably easier than you think. I feel like we could definitely get to like some premieres or something eventually and then maybe work our work way, way to the Grammy. Yeah, because now the strike is over so we can start going to strike premieres. Strike is over and we can start acting a fool now oh. that the strike is <laughs> Come on, idol people. <laughs> I want all of you on here. Let's get, let's go. I know I thought about that. That's the first thing I thought about when the strike was over. I was like, oh, we can get the idol people on here. <laughs> Finally, they're free. Yeah, yeah. that's, it's amazing. So congrats. Congratulations to the actors. The strike is <laughs> over. We did it. I see all over TikTok like these like people who are like, you know, just like random actors being like, finally, we can get back to work. And I'll be like, ah, is this why you're not working? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I mean, I'm the same way. I've been saying after I haven't worked in uh, 15 years. But I do get residuals for like Nathan for you and stuff like that. So that's I guess wild. it's like, yeah, yeah. it's kind of, I'm, I don't know. I'm glad it's over. I don't know if they like got what they wanted though, right? It was kind of like they didn't get the full AI. Yeah, they had to kind of like meet in the middle about certain certain things yeah. like but I think overall they're happy at least for the next three years and yeah. three years we'll guess we'll see what happens but and yeah. then what then it could be another strike they have to nego- renegotiate in three years in three and then years. if they don't yeah that's how long this 
agreement is good for is for three years and then really yeah oh that's like nothing that's and crazy then, yeah so it could all happen again in three years or who knows i guess like <laughs> really who knows i feel like every Never year know. things just are like so wild so i just guess we'll see up for negotiations yeah how do you get the interviews on the red carpet like how do they decide there or is it predetermined Ce- with celebrities mm-hmm. a lot of it's predetermined for like the big names they'll kind of like arrange in advance like to make sure that they'll talk um, and then some of it's on the, cause the guest list is also like very random sometimes for premieres or any kind of event. So some of it's like on the fly, but for the, uh. if there's someone that you definitely want, you kind of reach out and plan it in advance to make sure they stop. Cause it can be very like, you know, All just over walk. Place. Yeah. I always wondered that like influencers that go to the, like these events, are they like getting pulled? Like <laughs> yeah. what if they don't know it? You know, like you would know them, but like what if they don't, other people yeah, don't know them? Yeah, it's really awkward. It's <laughs> Turning really? someone down is so – that's why I, I'm glad I don't really do, like, events or anything anymore because it's, like – it's very uncomfortable. I would My problem is I would have trouble saying no if I was, like, alone covering carpets. But right. But for the most part, it's, like, you know who you want. So if you don't want someone, you kind of just turn around and you <gasps> pretend not <laughs> – you put your mic down. You pretend oh. to just like not be hit. And then publicists kind of know to like not bring them to oh you. Oh my God. That's, oh, that's like my biggest fear. <laughs> but it's also like sometimes they'll catch you and be like, I have this person. Can you talk to them? And then you'd be like, mm, we're going to pass. And then they are so persistent. Oh no. So I'd be a terrible publicist because I would feel so awkward like coming up and saying oh. like, oh, do you want to talk to this random girl? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's so, and it's so awkward because even if they're really well known, like sometimes you just like, you, like you don't know what to ask them if you're not prepared. Yeah. Like that's how I would feel. I'd feel like, okay, I don't even know. That's why I don't do red carpets because like also like just like I know sometimes when the, the cameras are up and then sometimes all the cameras go down <laughs> yes. and that's my biggest fear. So this is no shade to any influencer. This is about me being on a red carpet. I would be like, no, thank you. I do not want all the cameras going down yeah. when I come up. I saw this, there was like a TikToker. I forgot who it was. And I'm so mad. I forgot who it was, but she was like posting herself at this event on the red carpet and she did that. Like she was like posing, trying to like flex a little bit. And then someone like uh, quote tweeted it. And then it was like, look at all the photographers putting their cameras down. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, my biggest fear. That's And that's so sad. Dad. And it, but like, I don't knock the influencers for going. Cause like, like I get it. Like, ugh. it's so funny. I talked to Moses about this too. Like, like I always see them at, like going to the Oscars and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And for me personally, I would be like, so oh, I'm not nominated. I'm not an actor. Why am I here? Sort of thing. But on the flip side, cause Moses disagrees with me. He thinks like, oh, you should go be seen. You're at the Oscars. Like how many people get to like be red on the red carpet at the Oscars? I'm like, no, but I, I'm not nominated. Why would I go? I'd feel like so. Usually they get for like those big events. A lot of the times they either like get paid or get like special access. So they kind of like sell oh. it. Yeah. Wait, influencers get paid to go? Yeah. Cause they'll have to like have. Oh. They'll have to post like X amount of posts or oh something my- like that. What? Yeah. Okay, well then, Amy. Hey, <laughs> there's a reason. There's a reason they go there. Wait, really? I think really? her name was Tiff Beira. Who? Who? Because I saw it too. Influencer shares. Oh, oh, the girl on the carpet. Yeah, yes. I saw it. And she walked the red carpet and suddenly everyone put their cameras down. There's no flashes. Yeah. And then she walks oh. out and then she's like, okay, I'm going to try again. She came back again and again. Oh, wait, wait. What? <laughs> Why so did she <laughs> come back? <laughs> She I really wanted the hustle, oh. the grind. I get I it. I love that. Wait, what did she do? First of all, I I kind of left for I, that. I, that's camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, <laughs> that's okay. camp. I would have Moses be there just so he can take the pictures. Like Moses, get out there. Well, you know I'm the paparazzi. You're the literally. I would be doing the, the sign. <laughs> yes, I would bring you to all the events just in case that I'll happens. Bring, like strobe lights to, to pretend. That <laughs> oh it's my God. Just... I'm, that's wild. I love that she went back. Do you know her? Do you no, know her? I just saw okay. her on Twitter. Yeah, but was this recent? Why did I not I see think this? It was, like last week, I yeah. think I saw it. Yeah, you can show me this one. Oh my gosh. Okay. I know. It's, sometimes wow. you see things and you don't really think anything of it, then it pops up in conversation. I'm like, oh yeah. This is this random video I saw two weeks ago is in my head. Oh somewhere. right, like you I, know, I love that. Where was she at? Do we know? I literally have no idea. Okay. Like, because I saw it out of context, like someone trying to like make fun of her, which is like so lame. Like, first of all, yeah, getting that the is... invite there is a big deal in, in and of itself. So like, of I would course. never make fun of someone. But people make fun of people are just like so like they're just like bored. <laughs> and I get it, I get it, because like in the privacy of your own home, you're just like oh, because there's there's certain things. God, we saw a TikTok yesterday. I can't think of what it was, and it's just like so funny. And you're just like, why? Do you remember that was? If it's bad, we won't say it. And I was just like, oh no, this wasn't a. TikTok. Taco's was married at first sight. Oh. <laughs> it was, anyways, a dirty niche. We don't need that planet. But I was trying to think what it was. And sometimes, you know, something you just crack up so hard. You're just like, oh my God, why would that person say that? And you like get so embarrassed for them. I don't know. It was a whole thing. But I feel like when people make fun of people like that, it's just like, yeah, you're just like sad or whatever. You just like never know. Because sometimes it's like, like I think of Emma Chamberlain at BeautyCon when like, she literally, I think there's like two photos of her from BeautyCon because like no one knew who she was. But it's like her first ever red carpet. And now it's like, 
you have like she's so popular. So you she's just like, never know. Yeah. yeah, you just Wait, never did no know. one take pictures of her? Literally just like two photos. Oh. And then no one like interview I was the only one who interviewed her because I oh liked my God, her. What a flex. I know that was like my big <laughs> my big Emma exclusive. You know, yeah. you know, you know, you're like this girl's gonna be I a big star. When yeah. I saw her. Yeah. And I'll look at her. You just you never huge. know who's gonna pop off. Yeah, so. that is true. Maybe that girl Tiff what's her name? Tiffany Tiff- Bayo? Bear- what is it? Bea. Bea. Tiffany Bea may pop off one day. And they're going to regret not taking her photo. And that's everything, though. I kind of love that. Because you see, like, old, really old paparazzi videos of, like, Brad Pitt in, like, the 90s and him trying to get photographed and stuff yeah. like that, you know? And it's like, you got to start somewhere. You just you never, gotta, yeah. yeah. You could be the next big thing and no right. one will have any idea. I'm shook that these people get paid to go to the Oscars. I'm so, so shocked. I don't know if this, the Oscars might not. I know a lot of other, especially smaller ones, but some, because... Oh. Okay. They either get paid or they're offered like really exclusive like access and stuff. Because there's some Dang. events where it's just like the name and the prestige of being there is like enough. Right. But there's some where it's like if they want specifically, it's like, you know, a little mini brand deal almost. Right. Like to get X amount of coverage yeah. or whatever. But um, I think it's Chris Olsen who goes everywhere. He goes to camp. Chris Olsen's on everything. Everything. He got to interview Austin Butler. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he's on Mean Girls, the Mean Girls trailer. Yeah, what the hell? Uh, that's wild. <laughs> There's that's some amazing. that, like, once you do a couple mainstream things and people, it's, like, the go-to for, like, every yeah. agency, whatever. We're like, oh, who can we think of that's, like, safe, that's, like, mainstream, whatever? Yeah. Chris Olsen. Like, yeah, yeah. Who's, like, gay? Who's fun? Who's, yeah, <laughs> who's cute? Chris Olsen. Yeah. yeah. I know I'm jealous. I'm jealous of everything he has. He's best <laughs> friends with Megan Trainer. He does songs with her. He's in the Mean Girls. He gets to go to Cannes Film Festival. He's at the Oscars. <laughs> I was like, I love it. He follows me. Maybe I should DM him. Oh, I have DM'd him. He's I don't think sweet. he's ever messaged. Oh, you know him? I only met him once. Where? But he did a collab with Joey once oh. like when I was working oh, for him. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, there's some TikTokers who are just like really killing it. And I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. I think good for them always. I always think good for them when they get like deals. It's just like, one day it'll be me. One day it'll be us. <laughs> One day it'll be us. Uh, I'm just trying to get, you know what? Okay, so I was telling you, like, last week I was kind of, like, up and down, like, mentally or whatever. Yeah. And one thing that was, like, I was getting randomly just, like, upset about, but it was just because of my own jealousy. Not even influence, like, micro-influencers, I guess, who are yeah. just, like, you don't really do much. They're just hot. Yeah. And they, like, in their bio, they just have, like, an Amazon wish list. Oh. <laughs> and you I was, like, so mad about that. I was, like, that is what? To just be hot enough that people want to send you stuff? Yeah. I'm, like, that is crazy. It is crazy. But uh, people have been doing that for so long. I know. And I, I think it was one of those weeks where, like, every little thing was just, like, making me, like, upset in some way. And I was, like, how can you be just hot and people want to just send you? I, I was, know. like, going. I was spiraling. Is that funny? It. I hear that all the time. People get so mad. Like, a lot of, like, um, like OF girls and stuff. They'll, they'll do that. They'll have, like, a uh, wish list and people like, what, what should I just buy you stuff should I just send you stuff <laughs> I never like had an Amazon wish list because everything like some of the stuff I see on there that people on their wish list is like bed sheets for $32 <laughs> I'm like send me a thousand dollars and I'll decide what I do with uh, it I would take, I would take a little, any little thing I'd be like you would see my be like, it'd be like a random rug it would be like <laughs> like, like a just- vacuum <laughs> like I would have a coffee it, I would have the most like I know what I'm getting here for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, the rug rugs. and yes. a coffee maker. I mean, the rug has been. I don't do presents. I just give bonuses to everybody. Oh, like, here's so a sad. check because I I'm like that. Like I'm that person. I'm just like oh, I don't know what they would like. Will they even like? I'm like here's just money. Just go spend it or whatever. But I think it's like different when you like work with someone and just because I never know. I'm, everyone's so sweet. I'm, my glam people always like think of really thoughtful gifts. I'm like I just write checks to people. I'm like See, go buy I've what you like. I've already been thinking about because I'm like for your Christmas present like it has to be <laughs> unique. So I already started planning. I'm so excited. I'm like literally. It's weird. I'm like the wor- the easiest and the worst wife for because like I buy literally everything. <laughs> you, you buy know it for what yourself like, every time you like yeah, something. Yeah, which is not like a flex. I'm not like super rich. I just spend way too much money. But I always just buy what I want. And then it's like, yeah. But but on the flip side, I'm like so like if someone buy- gets me like a freaking water bottle, I'm like, oh my God, that's so nice. Like I love truly anything, but it does- you don't have to get me anything. But I know when the holidays come around, I always am like, oh, I don't know what to get anyway. So I just like, we'll just do bonuses. Some- I used to give bonuses to my friends that don't even like work with me or anything like that. I'd just be like, here's yeah, a friend bonus. Because <laughs> yeah. they would always get me cool items and I was just like oh I don't know what you get anybody anymore and I'm really Moses poor Moses like gets like no pro- I just get him candy literally I think we went clothing shopping for your birthday and I don't know I it's it, you're the most difficult person to buy for that you just don't want you don't Wait, want you bought him skims though right yeah, okay. which we haven't done a review. He's yeah, like, I was going to say, <laughs> I keep getting targeted men's skims at it. I keep really? meaning to ask Moses how the skims are. Yeah, well, he oh, hasn't no. done well, it yet. I'll wear it next time. Okay, it's just the underwear <laughs> and the t-shirt. He's like, I'm, I'm waiting to do it, which I told him he should do a TikTok, but he didn't. He's like, I'm waiting to do a TikTok on it. I'm like, well, when's the TikTok coming? Let's get to it. I feel like I'm one of the few that has it, you know. <laughs> Did you get the socks? No, we oh just got God. underwear I and t-shirts. The socks and the socks look cute. The socks are comfy. I wear skim socks for my Taylor Swift cosplay. I oh, oh my the God, Taylor there's Swift so much cosplay. to discuss. Yeah, yes. skims is really soft though. I like them. They're just 
expensive for socks. I but, know, but they look so cute. I like the little edges. Anyway. Yeah, no, Skims <laughs> is everything. They just did a Swarovski collection and it's like $2,000 for like a Swarovski. It's like crazy. Their stuff is so expensive though. I'm just like, oh, can I model for them? Like I would love to just get free PR from them. Um, Love of the Kansas City Chiefs. I love this. Okay, what was your inspiration today? Oh my God. I it went through. good vibes this morning with your <laughs> yes. text. And I was like, that's why I ran back to my mom's house. My mom actually ran back to her house. I was like, get it out of posh. We're giving it to Oscar because you have been so wonderful and You're great. You're so like, sweet. Yeah, okay, so the, tell me the inspo. Well, originally I was going to cosplay as Brooke. <laughs> oh my God. I want to cosplay as her too. Because I have my little Uggs. And, Can you see them? Um, you don't have a shoe cam. No. I sh- Wow, that's pretty flexible. Can you see Is that a frame? I think it is. That was good. Yes. Um, I really wanted, I loved Brooke's outfit in your interview with her. I love she looks so cute. The so San I was Diego. like, I want a pink San Diego crew neck and Uggs, Ugh. but I couldn't find her freaking crew neck. I was going to buy this crew neck anyway on Black Friday. I <laughs> Why already Black had plans. Friday? Is there sales on Etsy? I refuse to buy clothes until Black Friday. Because oh in my head, everything's on sale on Black Friday. Oh my God. I love that for you. I love it. You're so smart. You're smart with money, huh? Stuff for that I shouldn't be able to buy, like clothes and stuff that's just like kind of necessary. I'm like, I'll just wait until it's on sale. Like I never want to pay for wow. price. But then I'm bad because I cl- have a lot of collections. So like you I spend money things. on yeah, like trinkets and knickknacks. Okay, I'm bad with. okay, okay. But yeah, I was gonna save for Black Friday. I was like, oh, but I feel like it'd be cute today with the Uggs. And then I was like, if you didn't sell it on Poshmark. <laughs> you're so nice. And you're just like, if you did sell it on Poshmark, you can't find it, which is usually both true. After a podcast, I usually take her photo shoot. I take it off. I give it to my mom right away. I'm just like, posh it. Cause I just don't like things in my house. Like I'm such a hoarder. So I just try to like get everything out. as like, if I'm not going to wear it again, which is most, that's why I buy cheap stuff. I just like here, like I'm sell dead. it. I'm so, I was gagged that you didn't sell it on Poshmark. In my head, you just like. We had offers like, for it. And I was just like, Okay, like, no, like, I don't know. Like, that we have some so offers, sweet. and my, mom, my mom's so funny. She keeps it, but I was, I'm so happy because I'm like, oh, yay, it's something it's that, like. It's so cute. I it love it. It looks great on you. I love it so much. Yeah, it's a cute. It's, it, hers was vintage, like, from the 90s, but there's, like, replicas they yeah. sell online, and I got mine, like, overnight, so. It's yours. I was worried. I hate when people ask to borrow stuff because, like, I'll let them borrow, and I'm, like, a 2X. I wear 2X, and I people are like, oh, I'm swimming in this, and I'm like, oh, like, don't <laughs> trigger terrible. me. Yeah, and I know you are. You were, like, a large in Shark Boy, and I'm, like, a double. I'm a 1X in, like, Lava Girl, so I was like, oh no. It's gonna be. I'm like, well, you can have it, but it might be too huge on <laughs> no, you. You are wild. It looks good, but it's good. It's like oversized. It looks nice it's on not you. That over, you it like is you're oversized. Ginormous, and you're, <laughs> you literally are not. I have huge. Sh- I'm just like wide, but me. Well, me too. No, That's you're like, not. Are you serious? You're I'm not. not. Like, I'm so wide and it's fine. Like, no, really? I don't think space. so. Your legs are great. So. You have the best legs. I think I'm glad it's like, I had to, to have something go for me. Yeah. I guess. So I'm just this lips, I wish they need to do a full body cam on you. <laughs> I would die. <laughs> I die sometimes when I see myself. I would think I look so cute. And like, wait, is there a pillow? Wait, this is so weird. Okay. Either I've gotten bigger or this chair has gotten smaller. Right? Because I used to be able to like sit back and there was so much space here. You do. Your art, legs are just crossed. That's your the only reason. Up. But I'm so confused. Like, I feel like at the beginning no, I was I like think, tiny in this chair. Let's I like, think just it's just your huge. memory of it. But I think sitting like this is hard. You have to have both your legs up. But when you sit sideways, suddenly you feel like how wide it is. I don't and know. We need to yeah. make these wider for season two. <laughs> oh when we sell it for $50 million to Spotify, <laughs> we're going to get like a bigger set, bigger chair. <laughs> yes. We're going to do, if we sell it for $50 million to Spotify, we're going to get like an audience row. We're going to get like three audience oh rows. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can invite some audience in. I mean, it'll be at my house, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> We'll get the same audience all the time. Because so. <laughs> I want like rows of audience chairs. It'd be cute. I don't know. We need to get a wide shot so people can see what's happening in here. Because people always think you're in a little booth. <laughs> I had a guest on that's like, oh, is he in a booth? And I was like, no. But it's it's like we're like so close to each other. I know. Maybe like here or something or here. I don't know. There needs to be like a up there. We need like a wide. Actually, someone came and they thought it was, they were fake cameras. Oh, they thought it was a fake microphone. He's like, is this just a prop? And I was like, no. <laughs> He's coming up. He's, bless his heart. We talked about it in his interview. He's like, well, you're always like, like this. <laughs> I was like, okay. He thought there was like a boom. <laughs> like, okay. I love, I love people's no perceptions. Mic, like, oh my God, yeah, I was like, don't funny. use it like that. I was like, okay. I love people's perception of things. And then he's like, oh, you guys have like cameras. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I think what he doesn't get is how professional you are. You know, when you're not using it, I you move it away. It away <laughs> yeah. I know I'm loud. Yeah. <laughs> Just call me Mariah Carey with the high desk. I, like, ah. <laughs> I used to practice all the time in my room. I would always pretend I was like singing. And then when the like the big notes would go, I'd be like, ah. <laughs> me too. Did me you? too. Always falling yes. away. Yes. It's very Jessica Simpson. Oh, like, definitely yes. Jessica Simpson. Which you are serving Jessica today. Yeah I, yeah. I feel like a little Jennifer Coolidge. I feel a little cool mom vibes. I feel, I don't know. 
what the oh, vibes you were. You were giving me like Holly, Mad- Holly Madison, Jessica Simpson oh vibes. God. That's what I thought you were going for. Thank you. Yeah. I had nothing where I was going for. I just wanted to wear a wig because I've been putting so much heat on my hair. So I was like, let me do a wig today. And then they kind of just went with what they went. And this was like an outfit I put on. And I just I love it. Comfy. It's like house bunny. Yeah, this is like house very bunny. Yeah. I feel very, yeah, I, it's very Y2K vibes. And it's cute. Yeah. You. You're cute, cute too. We have a cute vibe. I love we'll the, have to get the Brick the, cosplay if you guys know. Probably San Diego, like you said, a tour shop in San Diego. <laughs> yes, well, just a I horse. think that's where she got it. So if you're in San Diego and you can buy those oversized pink, <laughs> hopefully she's probably oversized on her because she's so small. But <laughs> no, <laughs> in a good way. I know we're not supposed to comment on people's bodies. So now when I say people are small, uh, I mean that as like the best compliment yeah. ever. And I'm just like, oh wait, no, we're not supposed to comment on I people's bodies. I love it. She looks so cozy. I'm obsessed with uh, Brick Core. I think it's gonna oh, be my new aesthetic. I am. I'm, I'm Brick Core. I'm obsessed with everything Brick. I love her TikToks. I love where she just like talks to the camera so close. Like I'm really obsessed with her. I'm obsessed with Tana. I, like that's what I'm saying. I wish I could be on like canceled as a third co-host. I'm like, why can't I be on there? Like, Probably because I'm too old. <laughs> would not relate to anything but I really love I, them I know it's crazy because I feel the same like I love them but I'm like how do y'all live like this like they yeah. always have stories they always have so much going on and I'm just oh. like hey, Tana's I in like Hawaii <laughs> and just like uh, yeah everybody the, the, all of them they're just doing they went to Vegas on a private jet I was just like wow this is I've never been on a, I, well, I've maybe been on like two private jets no, I didn't pay for them someone paid for them and stuff and I was just like it's so extra. And I love it. Like, I have extra, but I was like, oh, they just, to be young and, like, rich and beautiful, like, I never, uh, yeah. could never. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm, like, I'm just, I'm thankful. Like, I, like, I don't think it's an experience I could live, I think. I like observing it and, like, hearing about it. Yes. But I, for me, it's just, like, my personality is just, like, I just, I'm more introverted. And, yeah. like, I like being home, so I don't know if I oh, could. Oh, same. I think Brooke's more like that from what I've gathered from these two girls. It seems like she's, like, introverted, likes to be at home. She has, like, a fancy, like, penthouse apartment and stuff. And I think Tana seems to be, like, the wild and crazy. And I love that's the thing. That's why they do so well. They're the, I think they're it girls. I think, like, last podcast, I was like, who's our it girl? And I think they're our it yeah, girls at the moment. Yeah, I love it. We should do it. <laughs> our, <laughs> our, like, member exclusive is, like, a canceled, like, <laughs> like a after show. <laughs> we just, like, dissect yeah. that. So, I love that. We just I react to cancel. <laughs> we just watch them. Um, yeah, guys, we're going to be doing um, a very special. Um, we're just going to announce it. Well, in December, we're going to start. We're working towards it. Yeah, yeah, Oscar brought it up, which I want to. I've always wanted to do this, but it's like just a more work in general. And I was just like, okay, yes. And you've been so busy. So I was just like so excited. I think it's like it feels right. The flow is right. So we're ha- going to offer some membership perks. The headshots I've been teasing, monthly headshots for you guys. <laughs> I'll do I'm new so photos excited. every season. <laughs> And we'll send it. There's the headshot right there. The promo. I'll have it signed. I'll have it signed. Um, and they'll be really, they won't be stamped. It'll be an uh, actual authenticated. He'll take video <laughs> of me signing. I love when people do that at bookstores when they're like signing all their books. And they go just like. That'll be me. I love it. But whenever people come to our house, they see the stack of headshots. and like, can I have, like people, Zach's crew, like we always get Tana's crew. Like we always give yeah. much people like, have a headshot. We almost like have a gift shop. They always get water bottles, headshots. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And sometimes some random, you know, Our guest this week was so obsessed with our oh my gosh you got the water <laughs> it makes me feel so legit when people are like impressed by everything we have here I was like thank you yes I never I've never seen custom water bottles like this Wait, in, in my, my like eight years of working in TV so. no ET no really yeah okay it's very like 2000s like when I worked on sets and stuff like that like deal or no deal they'd always have these and even for extras and I'd always keep the water bottles Playboy Mansion always had wow. them yeah I guess it's kind of like an old school thing but um yeah we're probably should do like a little storefront there's like a little office when you walk in we should make like a little just trish yeah. storefront because we have we like need cups we need a just trish pen oh right well we can give those out yeah. too Front pens are usually free <laughs> we'll do headshots when we have like the vip guests we'll make a little everyone's a vip guest but like we'll have the hoodies when we have them they're coming they're coming you guys but anyways it's so fun i i love doing this podcast it's so much fun me too i think like sky is the limit i really do i feel like tv show bigger podcast audience stores and i literally am always gagged when like people actually watch it because literally i just feel like we do it for fun most of the time and then i'm like oh yeah we, people actually like enjoy i'm gagged it. i'm i'm, I'm I'm truly, whenever we check the numbers, I'm always like, oh my gosh, 400,000 people. That hasn't happened. I literally tell oh, Moses. Yeah. We just yeah. got 400,000 subscribers. 400,000 oh, subscribers. Wow. Oh my God. And we get like, but think about this. We get like 400,000 subscribers and we get like half a million views on each video. Like it's actually insane. That's that means like each subscriber is watching. It's like unheard of anymore. I have 5 million on my main channel and get like, that channel's been doing better too, but you know, get like 50,000 or something. So it's like, it's actually insane. And 
I know people always say it's not about the views, which is not because I've been making videos for the past two years and no one was watching, but I, it does get exciting when people watch and I haven't had these numbers literally since like I told Moses like 2015 and stuff like that. So it's really cool. I, and you don't know why. Cause I'm like, wait, I feel like I've done this before. I've been doing this, you know, I share my opinions, but I think it's just, it, you know, when there's a flow, when something feels <laughs> yeah. right, people like it. It's and the right time, right vibe. It's all <laughs> good set design. <laughs> we elevated. So, Cause I'm like, I've been doing this for years and no one cares, but give me a microphone, a good set and an editor. Sky's the limit. And that's what I've been missing this whole time. Who knew? <laughs> so I'm, I, it's really cool. I, I love doing it. And it's, it is crazy to see like people watching and like numbers. You're just like, wow, that's so cool. It's wild. Or yeah. people clip stuff and they think it's funny. I and I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, it around. Like, we, yeah, we used to talk about it. Like we'll say like the most random things get clipped. And I'm like, that's so funny how people are like, she's so funny. And I was like, anyways, just us gassing ourselves up. I know, that was our <laughs> intro. <laughs> <laughs> to today's. That's right. We haven't even done it. Anyways, we have like cool membership stuff. We have merch coming too. It probably won't be here in time for Christmas because they sent us a weird email, our manufacturer, and they're just like, I don't know, not to get into the politics of it, but it's something like, oh, this is like not good conditions. We had to switch to a different, I don't know. It was this whole thing. So we're not Shein. What is, how do you pronounce <laughs> she, 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 I say Shein, but she some people say I Sheen. It, I think you're right. I think it's Shein. 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 Shein's still going strong. I see influencers have like their Christmas parties for Shein and oh, all that stuff like that. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, I'm a Fashion Nova girly, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about Fashion we Nova. We won't but be at the factory. We won't. Yeah, just... <laughs> that was wild. I want that girl, the one that the did The confidence that. activist was her Danny. Yes. I love her. I want her too. I would love her on. I wonder if she would talk about it. Because I think so much time has passed now where I feel like she couldn't like comfortably and talk she, about it. Yeah. And I hope she knows that she's camp. Like, you know, she's I, camp. sometimes I feel bad because people, I, I don't feel like people don't know or like get the vibes, but like maybe at the time, I'm sure it probably was really overwhelming. But now looking back, it's one of those things where it's like, it's camp. It's, it's a camp. meme. We love, we celebrate. <laughs> so I think she's, I think she's sweet. I, I think like it's like, lot. yeah, there's no like malice intent by it. And I think it is a lot like, you know, we saw, and they probably did. They probably saw these like really beautiful conditions and stuff. So it's like, yeah, they're not, they're not, Journalists, you know what I mean? They're not investigative <laughs> yeah. reporters, yeah. although maybe that's what they came across as or something. Yeah. That was a wild scandal. Were we doing this when that no, happened? No, we definitely oh. we would have been all over okay, that. Okay, because <laughs> I was like, wait, this is like a whole thing. That we was go like back. a month before <laughs> <laughs> we talk about this story again. Yeah. Oh my god, what a wild ride it's been. We started in the summer right before Barbie. Yeah, that's crazy. The week before Barbie, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Barbie become. It's crazy. It goes. Time goes by so fast. The fact that it's like literally the November, holidays, like Thanksgiving. Wild. Speaking of dream guests, because uh, we were talking about the Grammy noms and dream guests. I have a new dream guest. And this is not even a hot topic. Well, it's kind of a hot topic, but not really. Do you know who Matthew Lillard is? Yes. Hi. <gasps> okay, wait, wait I'm why dead. Did you get so because excited? I have like been down to Five Nights at Freddy's Bowl, <gasps> and I saw that you love. <laughs> I, I did not expect you to uh, be a FNAF girl. But I'm a FNAF girl. I, I was going to do my little chi uh, chica. Is it chica? Yeah, and cupcake. I was going to do my little cosplay, and it's kind of pink. I should have done it. I just didn't have a yellow wig, and I was like, I really want to do this like yellow wig moment. I wanted to make it good, but I'm like, oh, it's like relevant now. I should have done it today. I almost did, but I didn't think you would know. I'm I didn't think you would be into FNAF. because uh, I Wait, love were you a FNAF fan before or I'm, just I'm recent? I'm a fresh. I'm a fresh FNAF. Me too. Okay, me too. Which I think is totally fine. I think like when a movie comes out, I think if you're a true fan of that you should like you're a Swifty and you should be happy like all these people now are about Taylor yeah. Swift right I, it's weird when people are like oh now you're jumping I mean, I'm kind of like that with Elvis and I'm like oh, <laughs> oh no Elvis is getting cancelled and I'm like okay, okay oh, whatever shit. I'm still writing for Elvis Strong <laughs> but um, yeah with this one I feel like oh people are more like accepting of oh you're welcome to the <laughs> the FNAF yeah part, the FNAF yeah. okay so did you see the movie? Yes. Okay. I knew like a little bit about, like I've just heard of FNAF. I love calling it FNAF, FNAF too. I feel I very too. in the know. <laughs> it's very, yes, <laughs> yeah. very that. I've like known about the game and stuff just because I feel like it was so popular on YouTube. So I've known about it, but I've never like played it, never like looked into it. I knew it was kind of Chuck E. Cheese vibes. That's all I knew. Yeah. Um, but I, for some reason, I was so excited for the movie. I'm like, the second that comes out, I need to see it. When like, did it come out? Because I thought it, it just on came Halloween. out. Halloween. Oh, it came out on Halloween. Yeah. I thought it just came out. Like, we saw it, and I was like, oh, we're just seeing it now. My sister, like, came out on Halloween time. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't know. Okay, so, I first of all, I didn't know it was a video game. <laughs> <laughs> It's apparently, like, a I thought it was kind of recent, but I think it was, like, 2000 around 2010 or something. It's been a long time. Because it looks old. It's, like, it's supposed to look, like... The 80s. Yeah. But it's not from the 80s. No, it's, it's like, early, like, 2010s, around there, 2011, Okay, so the video game, is the video game the same plot line as the story? Yeah. The movie? Yeah. First of all, all I knew about it was TikTok. Like, during 2020, <laughs> I just remember, like, hey, kids, nice to eat ya. Are you looking at that one? You know, and I, was, I loved it, and my daughter loves it, too, every time I sing it. And I'm like, who's this? Working at this show? I don't know, but I don't think I like it. He's so cute. I can I always do it, and Malibu goes nuts for it. But I didn't know it was a video game... 
So are they singing that song in the video game? Is that what that's from? Uh, I'm assuming. It mu- they must be doing it in the video game. Okay. Anyway, so that's, I knew I knew about it from that, but I had no idea. Because even the people on TikTok were not dressing as the FNAF character. So I was just like, oh, they're just like, it's like a scary song or something. But I got so hooked from the movie. And I, I Matthew Lillard all the way. I'm just like, oh, this is why I love him. He's so good. Well, we won't. Can, we don't get spoilers yet or no? Can I think we, it's been a while. And it's like, if you know the game, you know it. So oh, really? We'll just say spoiler alert. Okay, for, spoiler for alert. Skip ahead like a minute. <laughs> Matthew Lillard being a baddie again. I was like, oh my God, See, this is all I of knew it. it. I knew the second I saw him on the screen, I'm like, oh, he's going to be the evil one. 100%. Oh, you did? Because I'm like, why else would you cast him and like make scream references, you know? So I was like. Oh, was there scream references? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, which one? <laughs> Sometimes I'm so bad with these well, things. Well, he did it. It was like, I've been. With the knife at the end, he like the way that he did it was the same way he did it. Oh. Scream. Are you a scream um, fan? Light. I th- I watch it, <laughs> but I'm also scared of it. So like I like I half watch. I Are guess. you scared of scream? I'm scared of a lot of things. I'm not scared of scream. I it's more camp, so I'm not super afraid. I just yeah. the when it gets very very stabby, I like oh, I'm not yeah. good with like gore. I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. but you're okay with FNAF. It's like so cute. It's like it's hard to like hate it. It's cute. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like just the like. Okay. Spoiler. Anyways, it's spoiler. Just skip ahead ten minutes. But like when they put the little like cupcake in the thing and they like look up to the monitor. Yeah. Oh, cute. cute. You know what I mean? And then the guy's like ah, and the little cupcake just. It's just so everything about it is cute. I mean, the story is like. Okay, I did not know going into it what it was. Same. I didn't know it was like kids. I was like, oh my god, this is so like it is like heartbreaking and it's like so sad. It's not based on real story. No. <laughs> okay, my sister, she said, did you hear my sister say it was based on a real story but at Chuck E. Cheese? And I was like, if this happened at Chuck E. Cheese, Chuck E. Cheese I mean, would be closed down. In that case, then Spider Man is a real story too. <laughs> Actually, based on like Chuck E. Cheese, like no. someone, yeah. Okay, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I'm. I watched a lot of like fanat. After I saw the movie, I was like, I need to learn everything. So Same. I watched a lot of like lore videos, yeah. and I, I didn't hear that it was based on. A, I mean, I definitely could be wrong, but I don't think so. Okay. I feel like we'd have more bad vibes about Chuck E. Cheese if that was the case. That's true, but. Chuck E. Cheese is getting rid of all the animatronics as of like this weekend. <gasps> the last one, there's only one left, and it's in Northridge. Are you serious? Yeah, they just did like a grand reopening, and that's like, the last place because the animatronics are so taking all the animatronics down, and because they're replacing the screen. It might be. It just it just was announced this weekend that they're all going away in like a couple weeks. Oh all the animatronics. God. But we go to Chuck E. Cheese and like the animatronics only go on when there's a birthday party. Yeah. So, but I guess they're gonna just do screens now or something, and they're okay. all gonna go away. Yeah, I don't, that's maybe sad. because of that. Because it is a little terrifying when you think about it, like the way these kids are in there and the way they die and stuff. It's just like. <laughs> And then you look at the because if you look at the Chuck E. Cheese ones, they are silent. They're like in the dark, silent. <laughs> and then this happens, and I'm just like, oh, I don't know. And they also are a bit. I guess it is Chuck E. Cheese based. I guess Chuck E. Cheese could probably see them. I don't know if they. It's like they can't because yeah. it's different. <laughs> yeah, and there was like another. There was like a similar-ish movie that was based on FNAF with like Nicolas Cage. I think it was like Wally's World or something. Oh, so I feel really? like if I never saw that one was just like a more violent FNAF. Um, yeah, this one's not. Not too that, bad. Yeah. The kids stuff yeah. was kind of crazy. I didn't know about that going into it either. I was like, oh, that's kind of like, I don't like kids stuff, but I know. it's kind of camp the way that they do it. And kids really like the series. So. And behind the scenes, they were like, sm- I always try to find like photos of them behind the scenes, <laughs> so like, like smiling yeah. with the things. So you're like, it wasn't bad. But I was telling Moses, because I always think about this, like, which is like Malibu or child actors in general. I'm just like, okay, those are actual actors having to like reenact these scenes, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, well, they're still children. Like, are they, are they traumatized? Because it's like, yes, it's acting, but you have to like feel some type of emotion. You have to like get that out of you. And it's like, where are they getting this trauma? Is it traumatizing them? Like, you know what I mean? Just in general, I know like Dakota Fanning and like hide and seek, she like talked about how it was like, cause she's, that's so graphic too. And she ends up being this like murderous person and stuff like that. And it's just like, does that affect them as a child? That's a good question. I feel like they must like behind the scenes do a lot of like therapy or like just making it the set really light like and like fun because even like i think hunger games like when amanda stenberg she was like i think like 12 years old or something she had like do a death scene um but her and jennifer lawrence like jennifer lawrence made it so like fun on set so it kind of like balanced the the trauma you know so i I think feel like that must be the vibe like they even it out i don't think i would let my daughter do like a horror movie i don't think i'd let her do five nights at freddy (laughs) you know what i mean because it's just like I don't know. It's just, it's just a lie. It's just, I, I don't know. Regardless, I feel like it's kind of traumatizing. And I, or like Lovely Bones, you know, that movie. Oh, well, it's just like, that one's really scary. Yeah. yeah. And so, and that Stanley Tucci, like, I would not want my daughter in that situation. I don't yeah. know. And I get it. It's acting and it's like a great opportunity. I just, I want it. I, I kinda, think that would be the same. It's like, yeah. I, but I'm also like very sensitive. So I, to me, it'd be too unsettling to me, I think, to even like imagine 
that situation being a reality, I think. I, I know I was always scared. We would play like Nancy Drew in our basement where all the lights would be turned off and we'd like go down these stairs and we'd just have our flashlights looking for things and then my brother would jump out and scare us. And like that would terrify me. Just like knowing my brother's down there and it's like acting or whatever, I still would be like so, like my heart would, I don't know. I just, I, I think it's like I was always really affected by movies as a kid. Like mm. with it, like my oh. brothers would scare me with it. They would say like, they would put like red food dye in the bathtub or the sink oh to make my- me think that it was coming. Or, that's wild. That's yeah, scary. Yeah. It's or another like, one, yeah. Anaconda, too. They always tell me that uh, Anaconda. When I would go swimming, they would say Anaconda's going to come out of the pool. Oh, my rain. God. Were <laughs> yeah. they older? Yeah, they're like the brothers? eight years older. Yeah. Two brothers. I have four. Four older brothers. Are you, yeah. And you're the fifth? Yeah, no sisters? A baby, no brother, no sisters, <gasps> only brothers. We always see this on TikTok. I'm like, what a nightmare. <laughs> it's wild. What's your mom? Was your mom trying it for a girl? I don't know. I think she was fine with, with she was boys. Okay. Yeah. I feel like she was trying. I feel like every time we see TikTok, they're like, we're trying for a girl, and it just never happens. <laughs> we're also, they were like, they're half brothers. So two of my dad's side, two of my mom's side. Okay, and okay. Me, so are you the only one with your parents? Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Okay, yeah. so they were like, okay, yeah, they I just think... wanted a baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. interesting. Yeah, I, and I'm I, gay, so I guess that helps too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It kind of worked there. Yeah, I always wondered that. I was like, how'd you know? It's like, you see it on TikTok. You see people have like, four, and you'll see people get mad at the gender reveal. They'll have like five daughters and the next one will be pink. And they're like, oh, they get like disappointed. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I just saw Kay- Kaylin from Teen Mom. Um, She has... She She's expecting twins. She has five kids now and she's expecting two bo- two twins. She has five boys and these two twins. And the initial gender reveal was two boys, but I think now that was a joke. I think now it's like a boy and a girl. Oh, so I think she'll get a and girl. And she wanted a girl? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I feel like everyone says they like want, I don't know. But five boys sound like, we watch Home Improvement and it has th- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> three boys. It's like, we should have like a drinking game or bingo. Like every time I mention Home Improvement or like Moses' bolognese. <laughs> Taylor we Swift should have and a bingo card. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The bingo <laughs> card's better. And um, every time I watch Home Improvement, I'm just like, oh my god! Like the boys on the show annoy annoy me. And they're supposed to be like these picture perfect. Like, well, I guess not. I guess they're supposed to be boys. But I'm like, oh boy, I don't know. Not that I'm like against having like little boys, but it just sounds like a lot, especially yeah. five. Yeah, because they do stuff us. like that. They tell you it's coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so mean. Did your parents ever say anything? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. You didn't tattle. No. Wow. Yeah, it built character, I guess. It built trauma and character. That's trauma. That's trauma. <laughs> yeah. I do look at clowns a little suspiciously from now on. It is a little scary. I don't really mind that movie either because to me, that one to me is the most abs- like ridiculous one. I'm like, okay, there's no like killer clown on the loose. Yeah. Clowns- <laughs> well, there what? Remember the whole killer clown era? Was that like in Europe or something? No, it was like in the Midwest. What? Yeah. Were they killing people or just scaring people? I, maybe just scaring. I kind of remember that. Like, no, people but then there was up. that one, like, what's his name? Oh, John Gacy? Wayne Gacy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, take it all back. <laughs> I mean, that Midwest is just effed up. That's why I left. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Midwest is weird stuff happens. People always get scared of like big cities like New York and LA, which is like, yeah, a lot of stuff happens here that like goes whatever. But it's like the small towns that are always like. Like FNAF. FNAF FNAF. takes place in Missouri, I think, or something. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. But Matthew Lillard is my dream guest. I actually have so many TikToks where people have. I know people always say I'd say I look like celebrities, but seriously, Matthew Lillard. (laughs) I got all the time. I have TikToks of me like transforming into his face. Like when Scream came out, I was like 10 years old and everyone at school called me, was he Stu or something like that? I don't know. Everyone called me this and I was just like, oh my God. And they all thought I looked like a boy. So they're all like, you look like Matthew Lillard. But if you look at Matthew Lillard young, like I kind of do look like him and he's been my doppelganger, but I loved him in every early 2000s movie. I loved whatever it takes. I love She's All That. I love, um, Scooby-Doo. Well, no, (laughs) not Scooby-Doo. I love Scooby-Doo. I was listening, uh, you do? Yeah, the live action. Oh no. I, I don't like Scooby Doo Pier. I don't like the cartoon. I don't like the oh. costumes. I don't like the live action. I think all the characters are like annoying. None of them are cute. None of them are fun. Shaggy might be the worst. I'm just like, no, all of them, Velma, not cute. Like, I love FNAF or Josh Hutcherson. Like, that, I feel like that. He's was, from Hunger Games, right? Yes. Yeah, he's. I love fans. He was great in this movie, but I, I don't know. He's a cutie. Yeah. I know something about him is very charming to me. He was great in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Is he, is he British in real life or no? No, he's okay. American. Oh. Yeah. Why did I think he was British? Is, in Hunger Games, is he British? <laughs> no. Wait, really? Isn't someone British in that? In Liam hun- Hemsworth. He's Australian in real life, Liam Hemsworth, but he's American in the movie. The oh. whole movie is about America. It's like, I'm a, it takes, it's like, <laughs> it, Apple, and like it takes place in like Appalachia or whatever. Wait, what? <laughs> is Appalachia in America? Yes. <laughs> Where is that? Where is the Appalachia? Appalachian Mountain. It's like near North Carolina. Uh, the I Hunger Games takes place in the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah. And like that area. <laughs> Are you like, sure? It's very Americana. Yeah. Okay. Love that. It's very uh, broke back because <laughs> I think that's in the Appalachian Mountains too. <laughs> They're all in the same universe. <laughs> Wait, and did you notice the YouTube cameos in FNAF? 
Oh my god. Okay, well, no, I read about it though. One of the gamers, is it like Dream or XQC or one of them? <laughs> Matt Pat. Oh, Dude. Matt Pat. Why does everyone talk about him? Everyone's like, oh, I love Matt Pat. I do know who he is now because I think our first episode you said I have no idea who Matt Pat is, um, but no. But I saw that he was. I did read an article of like, no, who is he? And why did he get in this movie? Because I guess he did a lot of like videos explaining the lore of FNAF <gasps> as it was as the game was coming out. <sighs> he so he manifested he had, it. So he had like a lot of contribution to why it like became bigger. Oh uh, man, what a what that's manifestation goals is like doing all those videos hoping you get noticed and then boom you get noticed I was in the movie like 10 years later oh, <laughs> oh it was 10 years ago so he really committed oh my gosh I saw that okay people love Matt Pat I always see him I don't know people are like I love Matt Pat I'm like okay well I thought of it too because he released FNAF merch not to plug his merch but he actually released like girly pastel like FNAF <gasps> why merch why did you tweet show. me back when I asked where's I the was, pastel I was waiting that's my other thing too sometimes like I have to save stuff like I'm sacrificing <laughs> for my art because it's like I want to like text I see something and I want to send or text you and I'm like I have to wait till I till know, Monday. I, I'm the same way. I get the same way when you texted me last night. Oh no, we don't have it. Our the sexiest man alive. Where's that issue? We have to go get that. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's like a whole different thing. But anyways, who else was in it? Who else was um, them? Oh, Corey X Kenshin. Who was he? Um, he was the dri- the taxi driver. He was like, oh, and the Freddy came out. It was like, oh, I get all the weirdos or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, that's a good one. And then Mark, you know, Markiplier. Yeah, okay. yeah. He was supposed to be the security guard in the opening scene, oh, but he was he... filming another movie, so he couldn't. Okay. <laughs> Booked him busy. What I was know. he filming? <laughs> uh, his own movie, I guess. Wait, what? Yeah, he has his own. Markiplier is huge. Markiplier is so huge, and I don't even know what he does. He's, he does gaming, and he's hot, so I guess it's like the combination of, of both. That's, okay, the gaming thing is wild to me. Like, it's crazy. So people are just watching people play video games? Yeah. It's not wild, and it makes so much money. Oh, my. What? Are you doing this? I you know, love I video games. You have your pink set up. <laughs> I know, I should. Oh, my God. But I, I don't play, like, cool games, though. I don't. I play, Do you like, play FNAF now? No, I'm scared. I, maybe I should play FNAF, but it's also scary. I don't know. I feel like I'd be afraid of all the little jump scares. I feel like it's scarier in video games. Yeah, in totally. Movie. I've seen it. Or it's like the lights are, <laughs> yeah, you know, like that. I think so, too. Sounds. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Coming in, coming in hot. We have a couple magazines. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge fan. I, I want Matthew Lillard on so bad. He just seems so cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and he should have been on the sexiest man alive, I think. Okay. Like on the list. What a, what a transition sad. was that? <laughs> we love it. Okay, I'm I'm shook. We went out and bought this for research I'm purposes. I'm so glad you posted it. Yeah, because <laughs> did you I'm, buy it? No, I didn't buy it. Growing I, up, we were, my mom would always buy sexiest man alive, and we were like, oh my god, they're so hot. We just really? like Google all the people. I don't mean. know. Patrick Dempsey, I think out of the recent Sexiest Man Alive, I think he's deserving of the title. He is definitely – he's hot. He, I think he's gotten hotter with age. And I feel like yeah. maybe when he was younger with on like Grey's Anatomy, I feel like – I don't remember exactly, but I remember there was some like drama with him on Grey's Anatomy. But I feel like oh. now he's kind of like gone past all the drama and he's very just like settled. But I do have some tea. On him? On pe- on Sexiest Man Alive, on who it was supposed to be. Oh, my God. I love that you know all this. Wait, what? <laughs> Allegedly through sourcing. It was supposed to be Pedro Pascal, but he turned it down. Wait, what? Allegedly. Why? Because the I think strike, he's in here. Um, what? Because they have to do a whole interview for oh. Sexiest Man Alive, and with the strike, he didn't want to promote like any of his past projects or whatever, so oh he God. turned it down wow, this what an year. ally to the union. Uh, <laughs> He's like, I will. I'll talk yes. about Grey's Anatomy. I like Thanksgiving. Isn't, isn't he in Thanksgiving? He is, which yeah. is so... Again, my little flex. My friend Jeff wrote the movie. And I remember when they were casting it earlier. This year, they literally shot the movie and casted it like this year. Because I remember it was happening in March. And I was like, um, why am I not being flown to Canada for this movie to be in it? But he was saying, oh, we can only hire like three American actors. That's what he told me. I don't know. Maybe this is... I think he's real. My friend doesn't lie to me. He basically had to hire all Canadian actors for, I don't know, tax or... I don't know. I'm not sure. Something. So they can only hire like a few American people. And of course, one of them being the goddess Addison and Ray, and then one was Patrick Dempsey. I'm like, you're really gonna pick Patrick Dempsey over me? <laughs> like, I'm happy to come. Like, just, whatever. So yeah, he is in the movie because Grey's Anatomy. Not to, I'm not even being mean because he is gorge. But um, Grey's Anatomy was like 20 years ago, right? The timing feels weird. A lot of people were like, shouldn't this have been like 10 <laughs> years ago? As like, a lot of people were like, didn't he also have it already? Even for me, I was like, I assumed that he was Sexiest Man Alive at some point. I don't think he was. I looked up. He never past, was. No, but he had like a little blurb, like you know, and like the list right. that would they include a whole bunch of people but yeah he was but never like, the it's, usually it's like a relevancy thing you know someone who's James Bond or someone comes to up promote. Yeah. yeah Ryan Gosling just got nominated for a Grammy nom you know it's like he this was his years Ken Ryan Gosling's never been sexiest man alive I think he has no no really? I think he's only been because I looked I look, we looked it up I think and I, I, I you can fact check it for me but I'm pretty sure he hasn't because there was a whole list of people and I was just like it was like Johnny Depp it was like this like random people I didn't see him on there Ryan Gosling must have turned no, it down. No, he's 
because he's in this too. Yeah, but when you're on the cover, you have to agree to like interview and and photo shoots and stuff. So Patrick Dempsey is the only person who went across the picket line. <laughs> yes, <to laughs> I think because he's had like a an, he had an interim agreement because he had an indie movie coming out. Oh. Yeah, so he could. So maybe he was it. the only one who could do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like, okay. I heard Pedro Pascal was the first choice, and then that makes sense because yeah, people live for him. And he has such a big year, so it it does make sense for Pedro. But Pedro Pascal. Well, there's a whole. I'm trying to find the whole section here. Then there was like sexiest grandpa. Did you see that? Yeah. Okay. So here's yes, my problem with sexiest it. man alive. Yes. Okay. So this may be controversial, but okay. They have like all <laughs> these like so, they have the sexiest man alive, the cover star, right. and then they have lists that just has ra- they give like random like honorary awards. And then they also have a sexy at every age, which they go like tw- from uh, 20 <laughs> onwards and they name like a sexy person who's 20, a sexy person who's 21. And I'm like, at some point we need to dial it back. <laughs> Where like, is it? I know. I want to find it's it. It's somewhere. In, it's like literally they just go like list yeah. ages and they list someone who's 20 years old. And I feel like <laughs> they're just Googling celebrities who are 20 and just picking a guy. Like, here you go. Here's your favorite. Like Landon Barker, I think, is the 20 year old. That's the sexiest 20 year old. I also we shouldn't be doing sexy Me as 20. Me too. Year I was like, it's not a little like. I think of Landon, I think of like a child and not in a bad way. He's just yeah. such a young kid. Like, why are we calling him sexiest? It's odd. I don't, it's yeah. odd to me. So I do love that Sexiest Man is, like, older. And, like, in general, I think they have, like, Idris Elba. They have, like, you know, usually, like, older men that, like, look good. Like Shelton. Oof. <laughs> yeah, Was he? Yes. It's so random. I think if you're a cheater, you shouldn't get to be on the cover. The integrity of Sexiest Man Alive, I think, is definitely in jeopardy. Like, because I yeah. feel like there needs to be some exclusivity. Like, we can't list every single man in Hollywood and put them in this issue. Because then it's like, well, then what does it all mean? Like, what are we doing this right. for? If you have sex yet every age, literally, like, I think it's, like, 20 to 80, I think. Wait, I need to find that. I need to you see You need that. to find the little section in there. I it's just wild. Saw sexiest grandpa runner up was Al Roker. <laughs> if Al Roker is making sexy men, no shade, he's a handsome man, but, like, really everybody's in this article literally. at this point. So it's, like, we need to gatekeep a little bit to have the list have some, like, meaning, some exclusivity. It's kind of like the Oscars. If you nominate every movie that's come out as best picture, right, it's then an, it's, like, what does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean? I love that the TikTok star is Jalen. I, I first I was like, who is this person? But I know, Monet McMahon. <laughs> Michael's boyfriend. Yeah. I love him. He like hypes her up so much. I love Monet. I want her on the podcast too. Um, the runner ups are Josh Richards. So random. I mean, again, Josh Richards to me is like boy. Like he's a little boy. It's, like, yeah. not, and again, not a condescending way, but it's like we shouldn't be calling him sexy. I need not to yet. know. I need to speak to the people sexiest man alive <laughs> committee. I know it's just like some writer is like, oh, what about this person? Oh, yeah, put him in. I feel like it's very that. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, that's. But we need to like put some honor back on the sexiest man alive issue because it's just yeah. literally look at all those people like that's so many people it is cr- no the whole magazine is just men which is also like a little bit like where's the sexiest woman you know what i mean i guess they used to one magazine was it maxim maybe what, oh. some maxim magazine well, maxim that's out of is issue sexist. yeah so that's it's like we need a reputable thing like people magazine yeah, or something also the photos in there they're not like you know glorified it's not like they're yeah, half they're naked like, it's, it's literally just regular photos Simu eating pizza <laughs> Like, if that puts me a sexiest, I should be the sexiest woman alive right here. Um, he looks good there, though. He does look good. It's interesting. I need to find this age thing. Do you know if it's in the back? Or, is that oh, it? No. There it is. Here we go. Oh, my God. It. Wait, what? The sexiest jack of- <laughs> Why do they have Jack of the Box? Do you think this is real? Why is Jack the sexiest? <laughs> must be sponsored. <laughs> Wait, you think they paid for it? Of course. It's no. Like that shows up, this yeah. can't be real. There's an interview with Jack from Jack in the Box. <laughs> I don't know. What? It has to be a commercial. Oh, it does say advertisement. You're right. It says advertisement at the top. I want him on the show. The integrity of people. I'm telling you, it's in jeopardy. Like, we need to do something about this. It is in jeopardy. People need to be riled up. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're starting with 20 years old. People, come on. Let's start with 25, just like the role we do with women. Let's start. Number 25 years old is Prayag Mishra. Oh, he's a TikToker. Oh, is he the one that says Pookie? Yes, it's Pookie. Okay, (laughs) I did not know his name, but I always see him, and I'm always like, who is this person? He is definitely good. Wow, good for him getting on here. Um, But they also give him, like, the littlest – everyone gets the littlest pictures. It's like you can barely see these people. I'm just like, who are these? Okay. Um, I honestly don't know. Who's Louis Cabaldi? He's a random singer. I think oh. I want to say Tana has oh. date or something with him or knows oh. him or something. She knows I feel everybody. Like, yeah. She probably knows everybody on this list <laughs> yeah. in the best way possible because I think it's such a flex. She's always like knows all these famous people and hot guys. I'm like, God, I wish this was me in my 20s. 
a lot of these people I don't know, which is crazy. I, I felt like John Michael Murray is 42 years old. Where's the 80 year old? Who's the lot? What's the oldest age there? Oh, here. It's oh. flipped. Okay. Cause I was like, wait. Oh, Michael Bolton. <laughs> he was just on Zach saying, I love Michael Bolton. I used to travel everywhere to see him. Like, literally, like after my last breakup, like three or four years, no, like longer than that, four years ago, I would travel everywhere to see Michael Bolton. I went to New Jersey. I don't know. I just thought we were going to date. <laughs> And I thought if How he saw me, he? he's 70. Okay. And he looks, do you know Michael Bolton? I do, yeah. From what? What do you know him from? Just as a singer, right? Doesn't he song. sing? I don't know any of his I'm work. Such a I just know. Give me one song. <laughs> I'm not even claiming to be a stand. I've heard the man's name a well, few times. Well, you know why? Because the new generation knows him from, do you remember Lonely Island? Yeah. He did that song like, this is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. Wait, you don't know this song? The only song I know is I'm on a boat. Is that Lonely Island? Yeah. It's oh, like okay. the same. Oh, wait, but the Jack Sparrow song is so big and Michael Bolton. <laughs> you know it? I have to hear like Wait, what? <laughs> How big was it? What it's did it huge. It what did it chart? A billion views. Was it number what number was it on it's the Hot 100? Probably number 1. It was so big. How come we'll but, have to hear it like here? Yeah, I just sang it for you. This is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> It's from the movie? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the whole song. It's like him is just like obsessed with like being a movie file and he just, is, oh my God. Everyone just go watch it. But let's not put it in. We don't need copyright. <laughs> 10 seconds of the song. Um, no, but I always think, oh man, that's what people know him from, whatever. Um, but he, he's also in Lip Sync Battle. He lip synced to Gangster's Paradise. He's like, been in. Michael Bolton? Yeah. Anyways, but what he's also done the theme song for Hercules. I am on my So you way. want him to burn the title of sexiest man, sexiest he seven-year-old. He should have been sexiest man alive. <laughs> I mean, if we're just going with whoever, willy-nilly here. Nathan Lane. Okay. This is the most random list. John Leguizamo. Like, where's <laughs> <laughs> the guy who played Mario or Luigi in the original Mario Brothers? That's very random. You know why they do it? Because then they increase the sales of the magazine because each one of this person has, has a 10 fan. people in their family. And that, that wants that it. little headshot. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> like a really big so Kenny Chesney fan. There's thousand people that will buy this magazine now because of that list. You know what? There was only one left when we went. We went to Barnes & Noble really? too where they have like all the magazines and there was only one left. So I guess it worked. But Who do you think is the sexiest in here? God, I don't know. I feel like I'm bad with like celebrity. I don't think anyone is like hot hot wait really yeah celebrities do, i think celebrities are hot i don't think real people are hot i think like celebrity people are hot i don't i feel like i don't know who would you pick as the sexiest man alive the weekend <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we just had a discussion because we were watching the golden bachelor and um th- we have to get to a hot topic soon but anyway i guess it's a hot topic <laughs> we were is- watching the golden bachelor and i'm like this is so sad like everyone has found the love of their lives and the love of their lives dies so they, have to, they have to start over again i'm like god if i'm like 70 i don't know if i have it in me to like start over and i was like well gerard way i'm like no gerard way's your age like he's gonna he'll also be dead like who am i gonna find and everyone i like naveen andrews is like 60 right now he's also gonna probably be dead by the time you know so i was like oh no one and then he's like the weekend i was like Absolutely. The weekend is three years or four years younger than me. That is, that's the one. <laughs> when I'm 75, he'll be 72 and it'll work out that way. But anyways, I'm glad that you made that suggestion. Moses doesn't get jealous at all. He's so funny. I'm like, you better never remarry when I die. I'm like, cause you know, Anna Nicole's, um, uh, baby daddy, her daughter's father never remarried, never dated anyone. Oh yeah. yeah. He's like, just all about Danny Lynn. All about her. Yeah. And I was like, can you please be that? <laughs> I'm one of those people who just like want you to stay single forever. I'll, I'll be jealous in my grave. <laughs> but I don't know. I guess I, I guess it doesn't matter if I'm dead. Me as a ghost. No, huh? but but yeah, I agree. A parent should stay with the kids. But you tell you think I'm gonna remarry? You're like, no, you can't be alone. You'll remarry. Yeah, or you'll just hire somebody. I hire. I think I'd rather hire. I don't know. It is a weird what? thing. <laughs> I mean, Malibu will be grown when I'm in my 70s. She'll be 40. So if I'm married to the weekend, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. It's like kind of sad, but uh, Patrick Dempsey is definitely daddy for sure. He's he definitely is. he's cute. handsome. Look, I'm saving you editing. No B roll. <laughs> this you. is how I do on my like. Oh my god, we should. And they just hold up the photo of every <laughs> every story we talk about. I think that's so much easier. That's like Wendy. They have like a screen behind her, and they just put up photos. Yeah. One day we'll get there. So we we'll just have to edit. Oh, what a wild thing. Um, I I'm here for. It. I like that they do this. I think it's fun. I think it is funny though. Like you can't really do this with women because it'd be like objectifying yeah. them. Yeah. And also, I don't know. I like that they do it of a certain age but i think ryan gosling should have had it but like you said maybe because of the strike or something yeah i think pedro would have been safe maybe next year will be pedro he'll agree to it but he's in here as man of the year yeah so they're probably like well (laughs) we can't get an interview with him just put him somewhere yeah Yeah. man oh lenny kravitz looks good oh oh tim well we can transition to timothy chalamet right there oh jacob alordi yeah Yeah, he made it he's he's cute um lenny kravitz is (laughs) 
He looks good. Uh, is he yeah. single? Maybe he could date my mom. He probably would date like 20 year olds or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. Um, Timothy Chalamet, all over. SNL. I had something with Iggy Azalea, but I was like, maybe SNL is more irrelevant than yeah. that. I don't know. Iggy was kind of coming from kind of hard. I was like, okay, girl. Really? For what? Um, She like went off. I actually don't know. Oh, no. Azalea Banks. Oh. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Those names do sound similar, though. Okay. I was like, Iggy, I did you why? <laughs> a long time ago, Iggy is, yeah, yeah. People reached out to me to do a mukbang with her, and then I never heard back oh, again. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, man, she that was She was in the YouTube era for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, Azalea Banks kind of went off on him, and I was just like. On Timothy or Troy? <sighs> Choice of all. Troy. God. Yes. <laughs> but Timothy <laughs> was Troy. Yes. And I said, yes, I and see. And now Troy's picture is Timothy as yes, him. Yes, it's all, okay. like, it's very oh my God. circular. <laughs> so, uh, SNL be wild and with all their guests lately. Yeah. SNL, actually. I, I was waiting for this. Actually. Oh, my God. I was annoyed before I started seeing other people, but even before Kate Hudson, Britney's manager, not Kate Hudson, Kate Hudson. Every time I say Kate Hudson, people are like, mm, anyways, Kate Hudson. Even before he put out a statement, I was going to say something, but I was like, you know what? Maybe not. Some people can be flattered, I guess, when SNL parodies them or whatever. But, like, the memoir sketch, I was, like, so – first of all, it was the worst impressions I've ever seen ever. And I love impressions. I love impressions. I'm someone who watches America's Got Talent just for the people who do impressions. Like, I think impressions are so – Impressive. I think they're so good. There's a guy on TikTok that does Howard Stern. Like, there's so many people do really amazing impressions, and I love it. And this was, like, first of all, the impressions were, like, so flat and so boring and basic and, like, what? Like, they're doing Alice and Janney. They're doing, like, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Or I'm like, what? Okay, random. Um, But also, it's, like, Britney's memoir. And Britney is, like, which, first of all, they asked her to host, and Kate Hudson has confirmed that they've asked her to host, and she says no or whatever like that. But also, it's like Britney has been an SNL staple. Britney has been super vulnerable about, about this book. Like, she really – it's a really beautiful book. If you see how it's written, it's really, like, poetic the way she talks about, like, her family. So, like, it's very – it's a very beautifully written book. And it's also a time in her life where it was just, like – it's it's very serious topics. She talks about abortion. She talks about all these things, like, that – her, you know, her parents being awful and stuff like that. And it's, like, for SNL to parody that, I think it's, like, such bad taste. I was so annoyed. I was just, like – because some of the excerpts they read weren't even excerpts from the book. Like, yeah. there was some that weren't even in there. And then the ones that they choose to read with, like, the celebrities they chose to read them, I was like, I don't know, like, the Julia Fox one talking about the first time, like, when she had, you know, sex with Justin or whatever. I was just like, I don't know. It just felt very poor taste. I was just like, the whole thing was ick. I don't know who wrote the sketch. I, don't, I thought the impressions were, I don't know. I just thought it was, like, really ick because it's like someone's like serious like memoir that's like it's Britney who's obviously been in a fragile state and we don't know how she is now and she put out this book and she's really vulnerable and she's getting a lot of like feedback and like I don't know to like make light of it it kind of gives everyone like a pass to like just and all stuff it's like to you know I don't know I just didn't like it I didn't like it either I mean I'm, I don't think I'm an SNL girly to begin with because everything really? I see I don't think is that funny but oh. <laughs> Especially, I like SNL usually. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's hit or miss for me. But it almost seemed like they were making fun of the experts, not in a like, oh, we're, Britney's in on the joke kind of way, like a laughing at Britney. Yeah, kind of like way. she's talking about her first time having sex with someone, and they're just like had like the Julia Fox character saying it. So I was like, it was just I don't know. so like why, especially because in the book she talked, Britney's talked about how she always felt like very self conscious when like VMAs or like award shows would make jokes about her. Yes. So why would you? Like pile on and do that. I don't. It just seemed very like counter of what every what the culture is. Like the culture is very like pro Britney, supporting Britney. Yeah. Finally, a woman is speaking up about her story, and then it's like, oh, we're actually gonna make fun of her for doing. Yeah, that. everyone's saying Chloe Feynman is like a fan of Britney, and she liked. I was like, okay, so you want to do that, and you want to do that horrible impression of her if you're a fan of her. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. I don't know. I I thought the whole thing was bad. And she, like you said, she wasn't in on the joke. You know, like Timothy Chalamet was there, so like the person playing Timothy Chalamet, like okay, like he's on the joke or whatever. But it's like she's not there. She's not approving this. They asked her to be in it and. And I mean, Kate, her manager, like, went off. So you knew there was, like, something even more, I feel like, behind the scenes. Like, they tried to get Britney or, like, like said no. or something. So then, like, oh, we can. Right. Yeah. Because she said no. So they're like, okay, well, now we're going to, like, make fun of her and stuff like that. I was just like, okay, this person who's talked about, like, mental health issues and all the stuff, the struggle she's been through, conservatorship and, you know. Also, I was just like, I don't know. I don't like it. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was – and I, I, I actually am an SNL person. I, I think they are, like, silly and dumb, but I used to think they're, like, funny. Like, I love the Bad Bunny one with Pedro Pascal. Like, I loved all of some that. Are, I think they're hit or miss for me because I'll yeah. see some and, like, and someone be like, like, okay, this also might be an unpopular opinion, but the choice of on Timmy C one, I didn't really get it. Same. I didn't get it. Like, they look like each other, yeah. so okay, but – I didn't get it either. I, I thought Timmy was cute doing his little dance, but I didn't get like the whole plot. I feel like Bo and Yang or something. Like, it was like it was very gay coded. So. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, like no, no, no. Like the gays are gonna love it, and <laughs> the gays are like Stan Twitter is like really loving oh, it. They are 
Troy Sivan is loving it. But I, I, I think people know. just like, because Troy loves Timothy. So I think that like, you know, the back and forth between Timmy and Troy and like Boy Genius, who were also in it. Yeah. I think like, that circle. they like that whole thing. But the actual like skit itself, I didn't really get. I was like, what? It- I didn't either. And maybe, and I don't feel like I'm a Troy fan these days. So I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what this is, but. It was, she was sick. And in her sickness, she was having delusions of choice of all. I don't know. I really don't. I'm not I'm like, am I just old? But also I'm like, will the no. mainstream audience like also have any, if I don't know what's going on and I'm like chronically I, online, will like yeah. a random person in the Midwest who's watching I like. I the same thing. I was it was weird. very niche. It was very weird. And yeah, I don't know. Tr- poor Troy. I think he could have done, like I get him being excited about it because I'd be excited too if someone had me like on SNL. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, that'd be so cool. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, it always does suck then then when they kind of miss it. It's like, oh man, you had an opportunity to do something something great and Tim- Timothy is a little you know you see those videos of Timothy back in the day and is like in high school at NYU doing his dancing yeah. You, yeah so I feel like Timmy was also like he was kind of laughing as he was doing it but he could have hit it a little bit harder I think uh, yeah I agree you know, I yeah I know he has a move so like he could have ate but he was well, like because he, he was trying to do the little Troy movements which <laughs> yeah. I I love the outfit I love the pants I was like oh could I cosplay this I was like probably not like <laughs> it probably would not look the same but I liked it I like that boy genius did it too I like yeah. that they were I would Dress as Troy Savon for SNL, so <gasps> you should. That would be a cute. If cosplay. he comes on, maybe I'll cosplay him. We can talk about the idol. We'll dangle that carrot above Troy. Troy, if you want to I'll cosplay <laughs> as you, if you come on this show, I feel like you wouldn't like me, but I feel like uh, I love him. So I love him. I love Troy too. He's. I mean, he has fatties in his videos now in the back somewhere. <laughs> One, so we're all good maybe now. Troy put us in the video. Maybe we <laughs> yeah, can be thick thumbs. <laughs> I would love that. Would you be in your underwear in a music video? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to be no? paid a lot, I think. Wait, pale? Paid a lot. Oh, really? I would do it for free. I you, don't wait, know. really? And uh, just underwear? Yeah. I'd be in skims with like a little tank <laughs> and undies. Yeah. You should, get, you should model for skims. I would, I would model. Yeah. I would love to model for skims. That's like the goal. Everyone seems to be modeling for them. I know. Brady Mahomes. Some of the Swifties were like upset about that. I'm like, girl. Because she's Taylor's friend, right? So. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think it's that deep. I don't know. Taylor probably doesn't care. She's in her own world of love. I so. know. I saw your tweet about Taylor and <laughs> I'm kind of on board. And it's so crazy because when we first started this podcast, I was like, I don't want to hear about Taylor Swift. But I'm like, I love it for her. <laughs> Everyone's saying she's going to get engaged. I know. The big, what was the big kiss moment at the air? <laughs> you were trying to figure out where to throw it. I want to throw it, but no, I don't know where. in front of you. <laughs> Remember when Gigi back in the day would like throw her like purses back and like perfumes? I want to be that where I just chaotic and throw uh, them. you had enough room behind yeah. <laughs> it. Just fall. I I love them. I love them. And like I don't know. I'm not a Swifty, but like she's never been like public before with like a relationship like this, right? I don't know. Actually, she kind of has been pretty public, but I think it's just been a while. Because even like when she dated Taylor Lautner, speaking of SNL, and she hosted SNL, she like in the monologue she sang a little song. She's like, and if you're wondering if I might be dating the werewolf from Twilight, hi Taylor. Taylor. So I I'm think not in she's the just, monologue. She's just kind of reverting back to like her typical self, I think. She gets yeah. like very invested in like theatrical in her relationships. Mm. But I think this, this time Travis is as like goofy and into mm-hmm. it. So it's like cuter. He's like cheesing in all the songs. He they were stands. comparing him to who's the one before him? There was one person that was like so like Joe cool. Alwyn. Oh yeah. yeah. And everyone's like, look at Joe <laughs> compared to uh Travis, like bouncing and blowing kisses. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, granted, he probably knows he's being filmed, but you know, everyone's I like think, filming him and, and he, Travis is always said. The girl that he dates, he wants her to be really successful and, like, he wants to be proud of, like, what his girlfriend does. So I think that's also very – I'm very, like – I'm trying to be less parasocial, but, like, I had to take my – I had to put my parasocial cap back on. It was really cute. It It was was so cute. cute. It was cute. All the videos, every angle. I was, like, giggling. I was kicking my feet. I'm like, this is Her being excited. Her changing the lyrics. And the kiss was so cute. And it's just, like, with those movies and you just, like, root for it so much. And you're just like, okay, this is kind of cute. Although I will say I'm also – I'm, like, very cautious because, like, it's, like, a lot. Like, every time they do anything, it's, like, all – it's all, like, all over the media. It's all over Twitter. It's all over Mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I also don't want it to be like too much because, you know, people will get too sick much, of it. Too much, too fast. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it'll, it'll be like anything, you know, because everyone gets excited. Like Pete Davidson and Kim, you know, they get excited. True. That's and then point. I think it'll like calm, you know. Okay. I think they'll get engaged, right? I can't wait because once they get engaged, we have literally the video footage of us saying Travis should date. <gasps> Taylor. Oh my god. So we yes. have to do a mo- We started it here. <laughs> yes. We started it at Just Trash. <laughs> Maybe Taylor watched. She's like, oh, they're right. I should I should you give them a call. Know. I think so. so. I sometimes I think everybody would talk about watches. Right? Like I feel like somewhere at least see the clip, you know. Yeah, I see people with like 12 views on TikTok like talking about me. So I'm like I, I assume like other people would just see, I don't know. I 
would think Taylor would know. <laughs> this one, I've never felt like, okay, this is going to be the one for her, but Travis, I do I do get that. They look so cute together. They're so cute together. Oh my God, their babies would be so beautiful. Like, and she's like older, you know, she's like 34, right? 34. So it's like that age where you're like wanting to get married, I yeah. feel. I feel like for every female, for, for the most part, like it's like that age is like the age you're like, okay. Because it's like later on in life now, which is cool. It's like everyone wants to get married a little later, have babies a little later. Mm. And it's kind of like for females, it's like this like biological thing that's like, okay, well, the kids are kind of like not now or never, but kind of now or never if you're going to have them, you know, and yourself. It's just, yeah, the timing, it all seems very, I don't know, like everything is like working out from, it's just yeah. like- a lot of people are in the business though, so I'm also like I'm very I get kind of like you. I'm a little gatekeepy. I'm less and less, <laughs> but sometimes I'm like I see, especially with like I don't want to uh, say his name. Uh, uh, I will say, sorry, it? Scotty. Scotty Cyrus tweeted like, oh my god, like <laughs> he love loves it. this podcast. We talk about him every. Episode. <laughs> Scotty tweeted like, <laughs> Scotty watch. OMG, do you know what this means for her? She never talks about anyone, and I'm like, okay, every like <laughs> random people just like cloud chasing at this point for for Tavis. Wait, what did they say? Scotty like quote tweeted the kiss video. I couldn't tell if it was satirical or like genuine. What he was, kiss like, video? The Taylor and Travis oh, okay. kissing. Oh, okay. He quote tweeted like, "Do you know what this means? Taylor is always private. She never kisses." Blah blah. blah. Like really gassing it up. Wait, a- <laughs> what? What? You don't like that he's a fan or what? Because it's like engagement <laughs> farming at this point. All of a sudden, everyone like has like a, an opinion or like wants to be in on like. <laughs> And I put in the blood, sweat, and tears for this. You yes, know what I mean? Like I get you. I, I really put in the hard work. Like, I was there when no one was. I was on the front lines. <laughs> I took several bullets for Taylor. Like, I, I put in the work. And then all of a sudden, there's a lot of people just, like... <laughs> Jumping in on it. The random podcast that never talk about Taylor all of a sudden have something to say. And they love it. I'm like, I think maybe just men. Men, men all of a sudden chiming <laughs> in. I think that's where I get a little triggered. But. It's more like they're doing it for... Yeah, I, I'm 100% with you on things that I like. Like, the Elvis movie was that for me i was just like oh man all these people are like elvis. <laughs> yeah where were you in 2010 i was doing elvis halls on youtube what were you doing i was at graceland in 2007 okay like you know and then it's like everyone gets on the bandwagon and everyone loves elvis and I'm like, oh my god everyone's gonna name their baby elvis but then it's like this movie comes out now and everyone's like covering their elvis shirts and stuff like in the theater i'm like oh my gosh okay like I it's just, hard you know. yeah yeah and because they will so sometimes they will turn like taylor you just um, this will probably end up good for her but you know like the snake era as you told me right yeah, else, everyone will turn against her so it's just like yeah when you're there with them through it all and i get it because it is so massive like I'm seeing it where I'm like I never saw this stuff before and you're just like and it's everywhere that kiss was everywhere and then you're just like okay and so but he was gassing her up it's like I can kind of tell when someone's just like engagement farming like I love that term engagement farming I, I don't know if it's around or if I just coined it but I'm sure I picked oh my it up God, from trademark. somewhere <laughs> trademark <laughs> sure, like, engagement farming we consume so much like I know. That it's hard to know like what's an original thought and I always think that too <laughs> I was like wait did we start this <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it is sometimes like wait maybe I did start this you know you know, yeah, I never know either because you just hear so much everything thing and uh, like that but I like that Taylor is like having her moment I okay when you said Travis though what, did he say in an interview before he met Taylor he wants someone yeah, successful before, when he was talking about what he's looking for in a girl like he, okay. which is fine but I uh, Mr. Beast did you see the Mr. Beast test <gasps> about his girlfriend oh if you kind of came for me on Twitter and I was like, wait, what? I am not in the wrong here because they're like, if this was a girl, I'm like, no, if this was a girl, it'd be weird too. Like, what are you talking about? Like him talking about the requirements he had for his like girlfriend and she checked all the boxes and like this and this. It's just like, this is like so weird to me. And I, I get I get having like a standard, but even like not to bash on Travis because we love Travis Kelsey, but it's just like, is your standard, like when you look for someone, the first thing is like, you want them to be successful? Like, that's a weird thing to say, right? Like, yeah. maybe just like doing something they love. I don't know. Successful is weird. Or like, I want to be proud of them. It's like, well, if you love someone, you're proud of them no matter what they That's do. True. You know what I mean? Like when I met Moses, I mean, I was like, the water photography, whatever. But literally the other day, we we're just admiring his water art. And I was like, this is actually really cool. And then I was like, interested. I was like, how did you film it? Like, were you doing it? Th-? Like, then you like fall in love and then you are proud of what they do. Even if that's not like what you, when, like when I met him, I wasn't like, wow, this is so cool. I was like, this is weird. But you fall in love <laughs> with someone and then you become proud. It's not like, what is he waiting for Taylor Swift where she's selling at like 70,000 seat theaters and you're just like, oh, okay, yeah, then I'm proud of this. I don't know. It's good. It's weird. And the Mr. Beast thing was weird too. I was just like all his like little requirements for his girlfriend. I was like, this is kind of odd. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. For me, I don't think you should have like boxes to check and stuff like that. Like yeah. have what you like. That's fine. Also don't say things out loud. Sometimes I think you don't need to like say, I want a skinny successful. Just like, you know, keep that in your head. You know, yeah. I don't know. Guys are weird. Guys are weird when they say stuff like this, especially like straight men too. Like when straight men say stuff like this, I'm just like. Do you hear what you're saying? Like, you sound so chauvinistic. Like, I don't know. Just keep that to yourself. <laughs> I think it's different when it's someone who's, like, very, like, uh, I don't mean in a bad way, but, like, Jimmy is just very, like, kind of, like, guy next door. Like, kind of, like, an average guy, you know? That's so it. it's, like, it's like average oh, okay. guys having all these boxes and, being, and like, what they fill entire- it or not. And I get, like, having a good, you know, standard and, like, not settling and stuff, but it came across, like, oh, almost, like, entitled. 
to. Totally, you know? totally. Like, well, they don't have this and they're not good enough for me. And I was just like, Whoa. yeah. And that's not falling in love with someone then. That's like, you know, oh, do you meet all my boxes? It's like, I don't know. Even like Kim Kardashian and like her show, she'll all, like, she has this list in her notes app of all like the traits or whatever. Even that, I'm like, okay, girl, like, let's I know. reel it back in. No. So it's not just like, not even just a guy thing. Also, like you said, like, for girls, girls yeah. Too, yeah. We all need to take a page out of Ariana Grande's book and just go with. <laughs> Follow your Whatever heart. Whatever the heart feels, because yeah. <laughs> she'd be following it. They were at a, the show last night, I think. They were leaving a theater. Yeah, and arm was, in arm. Yeah. yeah, that's... I guess they're full on going. They're full on going. At least it wasn't for nothing, you know? Let's, I look at it. Maybe she's going to have a baby. Oh, I a little know. wicked baby. <laughs> what a, like, wild ride that has been. I know. It just, like, started, and, like, when we started the podcast, really, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna it say, was, like, our it's first been, story. Yeah. It's wild, all that happens, and then it's kind of, like, people almost don't care anymore. I mean, yeah. they, they show them and stuff like that, but it's almost like, okay. Real quick for a quick break. King Kong magazine. This is my cover. It finally came. This is like the biggest magazine I've ever seen in my life. I'm on the cover. I'm on the back. I'm obsessed with all your <laughs> quotes that are in it. <laughs> they literally only asked me like four questions and then they're like, here's four quotes. Did I was you like, type okay. it out? I did. <laughs> I don't think they even changed how I typed. They're like, we're just going to put it right in there. It was a lot about, I guess it's an Americana issue. It was a lot about being America. And I, I didn't know what to say. I was just like, I'm fat and I don't know. I, I like love to be in America because we have Target and we have Pride. <laughs> After I said I hated rainbows. I love the Pride though. Yeah, I love, you know, all countries have Pride. And that is one thing that I love that we have. I love that we have a lot of Pride and I love that we have a lot of gays here in America. I think that's what makes it great. Not everywhere can you just be gay. You know what I mean? Uh, um, and I love it. I Let's love the case. Anyways, it's there. King Kong, my my uh my cover is sold out. I want oh, to go. Uh, no. Yeah, I want to go order more, and it's completely gone. No, yeah, because I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. It's pretty neat, and so I was gonna order more, and maybe I'll give one away on our new members only thing oh for my Christmas. God, yeah, because I have five, but. I'm hoarding all of them, so maybe I'll give one away. Anyways, that's so huge here at Thunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the beautiful. biggest weight ever. We have so many hot topics, and we haven't gotten to any of them. Okay, no, we've covered a little bit. Have we? Okay, yeah. we got <laughs> Matthew Lillard was all I needed to cover today. <laughs> that was all my notes. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, we need to talk about this. Did you hear what the new Met Gala theme is for <gasps> this year? Sleeping beautifies. Beauty, we awakening fashion. Yes. Sleeping beauties. Why okay. So guys? hearing that theme, what would you wear? Oh, my Princess of Aurora dress. <laughs> That'd be pink. Me and Holly are going dressed in our pink Disney costumes from buycostumes.com. Uh, yeah, I love I don't that. Know. That's what I thought of right away. It was Sleeping Beauty. My, the one I thought of before actually like reading what it's about was, you know, the little sleepy bear that's on the tees. He's like a little sleepy bear in a nightgown. No. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. You drink tea, you know a bear sleeping? Yeah, there's like tea that you drink to help you fall sleepy asleep. Time but tea. there's an actual yeah, bear on there? Tea. It's a little cartoon yeah. bear who's like sleep. He's like in a rocking chair. He's sleeping yeah. in a oh. nightgown. Weird. So I would wear, but I was going to wear like a nightgown like that, like the little sleeping bear is wearing. And he has like those little ni- sleepy hats with like the little. Oh, the, the old school yes. like Scrooge. But yeah. mine would be like, it turned into a train. So it would go like. Oh. 30 feet oh. long, and then there's, there's like the oh, avant-garde. Oh, because the stairs, you yeah. would have to do a train moment. The dramatic, like, sleeping. And I do a lot of sleepy poses, like. That would be cute. Would you go with the tea? Good, yeah, a little teacup, maybe. Yeah, a little that'd teacup. Be, I think yeah. that'd be cute. You should get sponsored by that brand yeah, and then just show carry the, the box <laughs> <laughs> on the Met Gala. <laughs> or they should just send you there. They sh- yeah, they should buy a table. Ooh, one year they should do a bear's theme, and you could go as that bear. I'll go as the Charmin bear. <laughs> I love the toilet paper bear. Why did they always put bears as advertisement? That's so random. Why are bears? Yeah, bears are like the mascot for everything. I don't know. That's kind of yeah, weird. That because, is random. Mm, maybe it's subliminally to the gays. <laughs> to the ones that like the bears. <laughs> that's what oh, it bears is. Bears and cubs. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's for. Okay, we see you. You're not slick Charmin and sleepy tea or whatever the tea is. <laughs> no, but sleeping beauties, I guess, is like we awakening fashion. It was a, it's similar saying it's shading or inspired by Kim's Marilyn. Yeah, so basically it's about almost like paying homage to, like, iconic looks. Like, in the museum itself, we're going to have, like, all these pieces of fashion that are, like, historical and, like, too um, sensitive to ever, like, be out. So pulling from the archives, whatever. But it is interesting because last year, Kim had, like, the Marilyn Monroe dress and mm-hmm. that, which was – she literally took – a gown that was very like sensitive and fragile and brought to the Met Gala. So now, is, so are they uh, going to do that or they're going to do replicas? A lot of people do replicas. Okay, because um, I'm like everyone was so mad about the Maryland thing. So why would they do that as the whole theme? Yeah, I just want every year to be camp. Like I feel like that's fun. Yeah, but the year they did camp, no one was camp. No one was camp. But now I feel like if they did camp, people would be more camp, don't you think? Because now totally. people know. Like I'll show up as Addison Ray <laughs> reading a book. <laughs> 
I'm reading Brittany's book number. <laughs> um, no, I love. I totally think camp would be like the way to go. Because everyone is that now. You could have Danny with Sheehan just wearing a Sheehan. Oh bag, my god! You know? They need to buy a table and they send just, her there. Yeah, mm-hmm. they should just do like memes. Maybe <laughs> maybe they really memes. should. Like James Charles went that year, the camp year, I think. What so, he does. He just had a little like sheer metal top. But I don't think people understand camp. I don't think I understand camp. I just know people say I'm camp, so I'm like, okay, all the times people say I'm you camp. You would just I'm like, wear Trish core and then you would be camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just I'd come with the just Trish set. Like I don't know, I don't know what camp is, but um, I I saw one dress that they said could be an option for the Met Gala. It was like it looked like a Hunger Games dress. It was like the butterfly one. Did you see that? Oh yes, yes, yes. What is that from? Do you know? Do you no, know anything about it? I don't it? know where the oh, original. Because okay. no. everyone's like, this is one. I'm like, that looks like the one that like what's her name Effie wears. You know, the butterfly, the orange. <laughs> butterfly you know yeah. what I'm talking about when she pulls the names out of the bowl. I never seen it yeah. I just see like clips of it here and there but I was like I wonder if Lenny Kravitz is in the new one no because it's a prequel but maybe they'll pay homage to Lenny Kravitz oh it's like happens before yeah. well I I love this I love the idea of it because I love the idea of like cosplaying so people are like taking an outfit that was really popular and like oh, wearing it again tea. you yeah. know I love the theme I think it's a good theme I want to go I, you do you think the invites are sent out I don't think so yet because it's so it's next May. So we have oh, plenty okay, of time. Okay. Seven months to plan. You should have a look yeah. just in case. Oh, God. What would I be? <laughs> what is it? It's reimagining fashion. What's like an iconic fashion moment? What could I be? I'm sure I have one in my head. I would wear I would wear the weekend with his bandages. <laughs> is that reawakening? I would say so. That's I mean, re- it could be like, re-awakening. A, like a mummy. No, but that's not the weekend. What? No, the bandages, but then the whole body, like, because it's kind of like. What is yeah. that fashion? We're waking what Leotasha. fashion? Just we actually reawake a Babe, like somebody that I thought you'd have a better idea. You're so good. You have you know my, fashion. You know art. My idea was okay. a, a big uh, blanket, like a jacket that's actually like this puffy white blanket and a pillow oh. head. But what is that reimagining? You have Just, to reimagine. That's a- my idea of a Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> but, okay. We got to take a fa- something that once was fashion. Someone wore once and we got to wear it. Like, what would be an outfit someone wore? Like, what would you wear? Like, I'm trying to think of, like, iconic fashion moments. I would do moments. your Celebrity Big Brother entrance look. I would recreate that. <laughs> <You're scammed. laughs> okay, I'll do that. And Celebrity Big Brother is coming back, actually. I'm, like, ready to be on that. In the U.S., in the U.K., I'm, like, put me back in. They said some people have gone back in for a second time. I would love to do that. I, would you ever do House of Villains with the show that Tiffany Pollard? I think no. you kind of cons- are considered... It seems easy though because they still have their phones and, and it's like down the street. They film them like in the valley. Oh, so. love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Golden Bachelor filmed here. Oh, like, really? Literally, literally two minutes. <laughs> There's a pickleball court like two minutes from us. I'm like, I know where that is. That's so funny. They actually stay here too in this. And our town is a small town and they stay like in our town. It's so weird. Um, no. I wouldn't do it because one, I'm not a villain, but two, I, they, they're just so like, New York is like cutthroat and I get it. It's like a character and she probably doesn't mean the stuff she says, but I would like cry if she said that <laughs> stuff to me. And I love New York. We're friends. I feel cause we've DM before, but in general, like Omarosa, like some of those, New York is fun, bad vibes, yeah. but then there's some like just bad, bad vibes, like the Omarosas. And then there's some people that you're just like, Oh, like, why are you here? Like Johnny Fairplay, <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> you're just, I, again, no knocking. I guess they're probably getting paid. And look, I would honestly, yes, I would do it. I would do anything <laughs> if you're, yeah. Okay. And not, let me not be a hater. Cause I was like, no, never. Is this more like anything that's a pretense of like bad girls club where we have to fight or like real housewives? Like immediately I would say no. But then I was like, oh, I probably would because you just want that clout. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, I guess if I have to fight with Erica Jane over. I would love to be on Real Housewives because I'd be like, I'd be, I would look like a big obese cow compared to those people. <laughs> no, you would not. No, because they all lost so much weight. Like they're even skinnier. So like, could you imagine in person? They're probably like literally like, I mean, a stick. I mean, Erica Jane is like, I mean, it's crazy how much skinnier she get. But it's like. Then you see someone, and I'm like, I'm heavier than most people. So it's like, you see a normal person next to them, they would look huge. But then you see me next to them, I would look like gigantic. No, you would not. I would like to see the size comparison. You have both body dysmorphics, I think. (laughs) You said sometimes you feel skinny, but I think you also think (laughs) you're bigger. I do feel, yeah, both. Because sometimes I'm like, oh. Yeah, you talking about you in the chair. I'm like, this is, I really am at the edge of the chair. I was like, wait, this, I feel like I was so like pushy back here before. I'm like at the edge of it. We got to get bigger seats for next season. (laughs) But only my chair. The guests can stay the same. So that way it looks like. Oh, my God. Um, Yeah. No, both. Sometimes I do feel really skinny. I don't know. I'm in my fat era right now, which is fine. It's the winter time. Well, that kind of reminds me. Did you see this thing with um, Jason Kelsey? He went to like this restaurant in Chicago. And I I guess I didn't know this, but I guess it's a restaurant where you go to get roasted. It's like a wiener place, like a hot dog. (laughs) 
And they put the billboard outside, like, welcome Taylor Swift's boy for, uh, boyfriend's brother. And oh, he goes to uh, order his hot dog, and they literally just, like, are making – they're calling him fat, ca- making fun of how thick wait, his neck is. What? And I was like, oh, that's so – when I was reading I was like, that's so rude. But then all the comments are like, you don't know. Like, this is what they do. You don't go to this oh, restaurant unless you want to yes. get bullied. I forget. It's you know like what it's Wiener, called? Wiener World or something. There's another one called, like, Ed DeBevix. And, like, yeah, Chicago is known for that. They have, like, restaurants where they, like, insult people. We used to go there. People would go there all the time, like, people I knew, like, friends, stuff like that. And I would, like, literally never go inside because they, like, literally insult you. That's all they do. That is wild. Yeah. No, that's cr- – no, I hate those. There's a couple restaurants oh, like Wiener that. Wiener Circle is what it was called in Chicago. I've been there. I've been there with David. The <gasps> vlog squad would go there. You? Yeah, um, They were nice to me, actually, which oh. I was like, yeah, but they insulted literally everyone else, and it was like so – yeah, they were actually really nice to me. It's crazy, but there's a lot of restaurants like that where they do that. There's another one I think it's, I think it's called Ed DeBevix, and I think they do the same thing. They just like totally just say you're fat and disgusting and I stuff. I would yeah. unalive myself, I think. I would cry People and throw love up, it. and I – that sounds like the worst thing in the world. I've been Yeah, I've been to that Wiener Circle one. It's almost like it's not even like a restaurant. It's almost like you stand and order. It's like this, like a Pink's hot dogs. Or something. Yeah, yeah, literally like, like a little that. Stand. It's very weird. Yeah, we went and I was just like, no, that's so weird. But yeah, was uh, the, so. What was it? They they were saying this stuff to him, or it was like, yeah, he was. I thought I didn't know it was like the thing because I was like, oh. oh, I was like offended for him. I'm like, oh my god, that's so mean. Why would you call him fat? And then oh my it, god. Then I realized you go there to get insulted. But then I was like, that sounds like my worst nightmare in the absolute world. Oh, oh awful. If it's, I went mm. to like Chili's and someone and I would like. <laughs> was like, oh, I'm going to get the freaking three for one or whatever. And they're like, okay, fatty. I was right. literally like. I think Chili's there conditioned. I, you only have Emily Blunt's there. You have to worry. <laughs> Otherwise, I think people know you go there to be a fatty. <laughs> There's no other reason to go to Chili's but other than like. Yeah. I'm kind of I'm over Chili's though, honestly, because I was I ate there like so many times <laughs> oh, in one week. That, yeah. yeah. I was just kind of like, oh, to Outback. We talked about that already. But there's certain things where you're just like, okay, I'm kind of like overeating yeah. there and stuff like that. Domino's too. I, my, I have a wig because I didn't want to put heat on my hair. But I also have a wig because I had like this ginormous. I have two. I have like huge pimples that I never get and it's every time I eat Domino's and I think it's just me because like other people my mom will eat Domino's like most of them they don't get breakouts but I get huge pimples every time I eat Domino's and I'm like Ugh. and I love it I almost wanted it tonight every but time like, you post it pimples. makes me want to so you really need to be get like at least a referral code or- <laughs> I don't think Domino's is gonna sponsor me after I decide to give me acne but I, I ate it like two weeks in a row and it was so it was honestly so good I missed it but I had so much acne back then when I used to eat it like three times a week and it's like it's coming back and I was like oh my gosh I never had acne but yeah we always I had a peanut butter sandwich literally minutes before I came down I had a peanut butter sandwich i had a toast i had i had so much and i still get so hungry for our things i don't know we need like a mukbang how do you not get hungry um, i think when i'm like doing something i don't really get hungry oh but when god. i have downtime i get hungry you're one of those people yeah and oh my god i did not get approved for ozempic so i was it's <gasps> all very wait did you go I, well, I went to my doctor and i was like um so what's the deal with ozempic and she was like mm, oh maybe diet exercise for a year and then you can try it and i was like Girl, oh good I, for her not just re- girl, you know, give me the prescribing pres- it. No. <laughs> I want to willy nilly. That's like- <laughs> wild. No, I, the more I read into it, because there's a lot of people like it changed my life. I love it. And then I got a lot of people being like, no. Yeah, the, I saw one woman like too. died. <gasps> oh, really? Yeah, someone sent it to me before like her daughter's wedding or something like that. Oh, yeah, we'll do the diet and exercise for a year. Same, same, same. same. But I mean, I have, that's the thing. I, I guess diet. I'm doing a diet. but The diet is. Everything. That's everything. Mine is like horrible. And I'm sure if I, I'm sure if I just ate normal for a week, I'd be like yeah. literally lose 20 pounds. Yeah. But I've been on a kick. I've been just on a pasta cheese. And I'm kind of like not mad at it, but I we go for walks. Although I will be out of breath when we go on walks. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. Like I was so out of breath the other day. But yeah, I'm just kind of, I don't know. I think next year we'll try again. 2024. <laughs> resolution. Yeah. I feel like right now it's just, you know, fun vibes. And that's where we're sticking. Lady Gaga singing Wicked. Did you see that? Her, oh, her former roommate. I literally have that same Oh, my one God. I love that we have the same hot topics. <laughs> former roommate. Why was she being interviewed? She was on The Bachelor a while ago, and she was on another ba- – you know, everyone in Bachelor Nation has a podcast, so it was one of those. Oh, yeah. So I think it was just a really random – podcast. So it's her own podcast she was talking no, about. No, it was another Bachelor guy. And, too, many bachelors, too many Bachelors. too many. They all have podcasts. Some of them I love. Shout out Ashley I. I love her. But, oh, Nick Vile. Um, Vile Files. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But Lady Gaga went to NYU in like the early 2000s. And I've seen this before where there was a Facebook group that classmates had made um, that was like, Stephanie Germanata, you'll never be famous. Oh, yeah. Was that real? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which is wild. I love that. She must have been one of those people. Okay, continue because I uh, have a theory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, this girl named Carly Waddle, who was, like I said, formerly on The Bachelor, um, was on Jason Tartik's podcast. And she said, I was not a fan. Stephanie used to play the piano during lunch and she would sit <laughs> at the piano every single day and just play and sing Wicked at the top of her lungs. I love that. <laughs> Very Twitch <laughs> Yeah. 
And we were all just trying to eat lunch. She's a, it was break time, and we were all forced to listen to her. And she, yes, she, was she good? Yes, of course. She was great, but I just wanted to eat my sandwich. And so I used to eat in the hallway because she was driving me crazy. I mean, this is the bad thing about podcasts. Is like I'm sure that was like a five minute conversation, and then it gets like blown up because it's like something you say in passing. Like I went to Lady Gaga, and she used to do this. And maybe I don't know the tone. Did you listen to it or no, just read it? I, just read I don't the know the tone. Maybe she's like, yeah, she would do this. And I'm like, oh, gotta listen to this again. Or maybe it was just like, oh, she did this. I mean, it's like, oh, gotta listen. To this. You don't know the tone of it. So I feel like it's that. But also it's like, I'm such a Wicked fan. I'm such a theater fan. I love people who sing and belt on the top of their lungs. But there is nothing more annoying than someone just like singing all the time. And I get it. Especially like lunch. You're trying to look on your phone. You're trying to do that. Can you just imagine someone belting, especially like Lady Gaga, just being like, defying gravity. Ah! It's just like, and the Wicked songs can be so annoying. I know that feeling. I'd be like, yeah, that's that's annoying. And it's stuck with her, obviously. So I think it's one of these things where it's like Lady Gaga is so famous. She does not care what you have to think, whatever that girl's name was, Coddle or whatever. But it's just like people take it so out of proportion. Like that's why she's Lady Gaga and you're Lady Gaga's roommate or something like that. And it's like not that big. But Lady Gaga is definitely that person to just be like probably just belting out and singing at the top of her lungs and lunch and stuff like she's that. She's very theater, especially when like she was doing the stuff with Tony Bennett. She's like, hey, then oh. wow, wow, wow. Yeah. you know, like. Oh, she did one where she was singing like somewhere over the rainbow to these kids and she was dressed in full Dorothy garb at like Good Morning America at like 6 a.m. She's like, somewhere. And I love it. I do. I, look, I don't love her, but I love that she does it. You know what I mean? I don't like hate her either, uh, but um, I love that that was such news and everyone was like so mad about it. And I was just like, that is like, it's just annoying. Like, it, I love good singers, but like when singers are singing all the time, it can be like a little annoying. And I love to sing, but. I love that it became a meme. <laughs> A meme where everyone's like me just trying to eat my sandwich <laughs> and yeah. everyone has these crazy tweets. It was funny because yeah. you can literally like imagine like oh. – like, I just see it visually at, like, reading these quotes. Totally, like, yeah, yeah. I can see her doing that. No, like, for sure. Little I, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like that girl, she's, you know, she's just trying to do a podcast and have an interesting story. She's like, I, I have this story. I yeah. <laughs> I get that. You just, you share so much, like, on a podcast, you just share so much stuff. That's why I always think people that, like, are doing well should never have a podcast. You know what I <laughs> you mean? Because you'll just, up. yeah, you'll always get canceled. There'll always be something that you say in three hours that's going to get you, like, canceled or, you know, because everyone just has something to disagree with and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Except our podcast, everyone agrees with everything we say. Oh, always. I like to flip flop a lot, so you know what I mean. Like, not flip flop. I like to play both sides. I see both sides. I see the hater side. I see the you know. I see the Lady Gaga. I'm like, yeah, if I was Lady Gaga too, I'd be like, I don't care. I'm a star. You guys are gonna listen to me. And on her side too, I'd be like, yeah, that's freaking annoying. Yeah, so where you stand. yeah, yeah. I see all sides, and that's how you stay uncanceled. And then there was another girl who went to school with Gaga at NYU. She like posted this TikTok and said she was an amazing student, always so incredibly talented. We knew she was going to blow up. Maybe she was a crazy theater kid, but honestly, who wasn't? She was just very passionate about what she did. Just Aww. a reminder that everyone's stories and perspectives are different. That's definitely, so definitely. Oh, my God. You know what I'm always shocked? Not to make this about me, but um, I'm always shocked people don't, like, talk about me from high school. Like, I never see kids I went to high school <laughs> talking about me, which is, like, good. You know, thank God. But I always think, like, I mean, I guess I was kind of, like, nothing. You know what I mean? I wasn't, like, popular. I wasn't, like, disliked. I just kind of existed. So I guess there's nothing to really say about me. Yeah. But I was surprised because I always would just like to know what people did perceive me. I don't know. I was yeah. most likely to be famous. That's what I was voted for in high school. So they kind of knew something. But <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. I always wondered how people perceive me. And I'm like, oh, no one's ever talked about me, really. I was most unforgettable, which is wild. Oh, I thought school. you said most forgettable. Oh, <laughs> like, oh no. I was, but unforgettable. I don't know if it was kind of a troll, though. I guess because like, no, I, I was kind so. of like, I was kind of no one the first two years. I was like the weird like Taylor Swift kid. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it because I would be like, I like got her CD the first day it came out whatever. And then Aww. I remember bringing to school, and I was like, "Oh, that's so gay!" Blah blah blah. Of course. Oh my god! That, I think that's why. Now it makes sense why I was mad at Scotty Sire. Um, uh, <laughs> you're like, you were that person. <laughs> was this but, before the Hillary Duff commercial? Where she's like, you shouldn't say that's so gay. Yeah, it actually was. <laughs> that's so girl yeah. wearing a shirt as a top <laughs> or skirt as a top. <laughs> oh when my you say god. that's okay, do you really mean what you say? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> wow, you had the quotes. You had the quotes. <laughs> um, but then, like, kind of like junior, senior year, when you kind of get in on the joke, then it's camp I think so then I think that's why you were then camp I was before the less, camp yeah. yeah so then I was like more in on the joke and like you know how were you in on it like what um, would you do we had like a, there was like this male like beauty pageant kind of, I don't know it was like oh. a but it was like talent whatever it was like Mr. the name of the school okay and um 
and it's like always like the like the year before me like the hot guy like the hot popular jock one and it's always like the hot guy wins whatever uh-huh. but I went and did it and I it was very trish coded actually like I performed a little medley to like Kesha oh. and like yeah, Miley Cyrus no singing wow yeah Would you I sing? did a dance no uh, <laughs> I think you do you do it with me sometimes um, and it was like a whole I don't know I was very camp about it and like making fun of myself almost and then I won the the title wow. yeah. Oh, who voted? The whole school. Oh mm-hmm. my god! Do you think yeah. it was that performance that sealed I it? I think so because I was very and I had like a couple. There was like this another girl who was made fun of because she used to do before TikTok like she would do little Facebook videos doing little like TikToky dances, right. and people would make fun of her. She would do like make up her own dances to Kesha and stuff. But I got her to be in my performance, and we did the dance oh. everyone made fun of. And oh. I was like, no, girl, we are gonna take you the collabed, narrative. You yes, know. yes, yes. I love that. It was like reclaiming like the joke, you know. Did so. you guys have rehearsals? Yes. Did yes, you at your house? No, it was just at the school. But. Oh, okay. I always love people coming over to the house and like we would rehearse. We had like lip syncs and stuff and I loved it. It's we, very we were big on lip syncs at our school. We always did like lip sync competitions. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Too, actually, that, that's so weird. Show. <laughs> what were we? I, I went for a lot of costume. Yeah, yeah. I love doing those. Those were so fun. That's all we got. That's a good title. Most unforgettable. Yeah. It's not bad. I, yeah. Most famous. I know what now you mean. <laughs> most famous, most unforgettable. Here we are. No, I know. Uh, when I was homecoming queen, everybody before me was like always like a skinny hot cheerleader. And then like I was voted that. I was like, is this a joke? And then my king was also like, you know, a non-traditional, you know, he's a little heavier and goofy. And so I was like, this is a weird. I think we were, I think we were voted because like they didn't want a hot skinny, pop, like popular person oh. to win. So like, we'll put these two. <laughs> Because we were like liked, the but like not. The higher almost. Yeah, like, literally. Yeah, body. <laughs> when they were ahead of the time with the. It, yeah. Anyways, that was interesting. But high school, what a time. Where did that come from? What did we just talk about? God, oh my God. Why? Carly, Waddle, Lady Gaga. But then you said Taylor Swift, you were the weird, most unforgettable. What is that? <laughs> didn't we switch to something else after Lady no, Gaga? We, we didn't. We we're stayed still, on that. Yeah. Speaking of high school musical, wow, the transition really? today. What do we have well, there? Well, did you see all the stuff with Zac Efron, people making fun of his face, and now people are defending him, oh, which is, thank God. That's because, what happens. They tear you down, and people need to try and bring yeah. you back up. What happened to it? I mean, it does look so different. Like, he does look very different. Not bad, but just different. So he's actually had, like, a lot of medical problems over the past few years. So in 2013, he um, broke his jaw because he slipped on a puddle randomly. A puddle? How did he <laughs> do that? He slipped on a puddle that sounds like not real. And, broke his, and he also was getting treatment for substance and alcohol abuse. Oh. So in conjunction, I feel like maybe that kind of makes sense. <laughs> um, but then in 2019, he actually contracted a bacterial infection because he had this show where he would go out into like I remember. the different countries and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in New Guinea, he contracted a life-threatening bacterial infection when filming the show. And then in 2021, he actually said that he tore his ACL, dislocated his shoulder, broke his wrist, threw out his back, and God. shattered his jaw all in that year. What? Oh, my God. He has a really bad luck. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So after all that, like, that's why his, like, face is looking different because he had – he said, like, his, at one point his jaw was literally just, like, hanging because it was, like, dislocated oh and broken. God. Yeah. So that. And- Almost sometimes too with like m- like medical use of steroids, you know what I mean, to like help you gain so your stuff back. Maybe yeah. he had some of that, like because his face looks, it just it's a completely different shape. I didn't know all that happened. Yeah. I mean, well, that obviously explains it. Then you have to get like a whole new face. Gosh. And he was saying that like hmm. he knows that it looks different, but he said if if he actually like read and cared about what everyone had to say, like he wouldn't be able to like be in show business. But yeah. It's kind of sad, though, because, like, every time he makes, like, a public appearance or every time he's in a new project, like, people bring it up. But he's already, like, explained it. And at that point, it's kind of, like, you kind of just have to, like, let it go and accept that this way. Like, like, no. <sighs> yeah, that's kind of weird because it's, like, at, like, it, like as an ET person, you have to go. Like, they want you to ask those questions, right? They're just, like, ask about his face. But it's also, like, oh, like, yeah. you're face-to-face with someone and that's what you ask him. I don't know. That'd they be asked weird. about it because I think last year because it was, like, his first, like, big project in a while. And he kind of explains, like, no, like, I almost died. And I think, like, I forget who he was co-starring with, but his co-star was, like, making a joke about it, like, trying to, like, lighten the moment. But yeah. he's like, no, but I actually almost died. And yeah. Like, and well, and it is, I mean, I never heard about any of this until now. So, yeah, something like that's, like, you literally could die, lose your life, and people are worried about, like, how you look. Like, yeah. it is, like, frustrating, especially if someone's, like, trying to make light of it. I get that, too. It's like, okay, haha, it's, like, so funny. My face looks different, but also, like, this I'm happened. I'm to be alive. Yeah. yeah. People are wild. People are, so, he, I think. He still looks good. I think he looks like completely different, but like obviously all that happening to him, it's like trauma. It's like yeah, you, your whole face. He's lucky to have a face. Like the fact that he did that so many times. Oh my god! And it kind of makes you feel a little bit. So I we kind of talked about it last week with like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, like the heartthrob thing. Like when yeah. you're glorified for when you're younger for how you look, and you're like the stereotypical hot guy. Like with Zach, I feel like every role he played after High School Musical, like he was already had like a shirtless scene where mm-hmm. he was just like his character was being hot. Baywatch so, and Link from Hairspray and, and just uh, neighbors when he was like shirtless. Right, so yeah. 
I feel like that too, you kind of like hold yourself to a weird standard where it's like you're known for like looking a certain way and then you look different and people have like, you know, negative takes on it. But yeah, that's why it's like you can't, especially stuff that's so sensitive, like medical stuff. Just kind of have to like I know. Drop. That's why you shouldn't comment on people's faces. If people's yeah. faces change, I mean, some people get like nip tucked or whatever, but then some people almost lost their life and they're lucky to have their face. I think he looks good. I know he has a new movie coming out. He's like playing a wrestler or something. I just saw like a trailer for yeah. it. I think he looks good. I think he's a good actor. I like him. I heard now he's, he, he would play Matthew Perry in a biopic. I guess like he wasn't going to and now he said he would or something like that, yeah. which is like a random choice, kind of weird choice, but I kind of love that. I mean, I know they played each other in 17 again or whatever, but it's kind of like, I feel like I would pick someone just like wild, like Ariana Grande to play me. Like I like Ariana Grande to be me, you know, just like, cause they don't look alike. Right. But I'm like, oh, you know, I guess if that's how you see playing you, that's fine. Yeah. I like Zach. He was great. Oh, High School Musical was a great time. I miss it so much. I love mm. everyone still brings up your bet on it. The bet on it? There's one I saw that had like six million views. That's wild. Oh my my one on YouTube doesn't even have that much. It's cool. <laughs> I'm glad they're getting a resurgence on TikTok. It's very cool to see. The Zach Efron one was great. And I had an injured knee. I had just injured my knee before that. And so I was I was giving it my all. But I looked it looked like I couldn't dance. And I was like, because I couldn't, but that's um, why I see you never comment because you never know what medical things exactly. everyone's going and through. And people said in the comments, real ones know she had a knee injury right before this and I was like yeah. period period <laughs> period period I don't like Zach Efron I hope he comes on I think he would be I like him a lot too I think he's sweet yeah, yeah. I think he's he's gone through a lot and I think he's talented he's the... now he's taking serious roles and he's good in them I like so. that too was that when he played a dad recently yeah it was it was a Peacock movie though I think like Firestarter or something last year oh right it was the uh, remake yeah I never saw it oh I should watch that one next I like Peacock you know we talked about 2B one episode and 2B reached out to send a PR package Shout out to B. Wow. What is the package going to include, you think? Like a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it wow. It is free. So it can't be like a membership because it's free, right? That's what, so. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. People you don't even know are watching to be watched and they're like, can we send you something? I'm like, What else can we start name dropping? Yes. Monster High? Can you say that? <laughs> yes. Sugar and Spice will be a good Monster High one. Yeah. Sugar and Spice, come on. I want to be Monster High. I don't know. Who would I be in Monster High? <laughs> oh, you'd be good Laguna. She's like blue. Okay. She's cute. Ooh, Moses loves a blue. Anytime I'm blue skin, she's he loves water, it. She's the water girl. <gasps> oh, you have to be her. Done yeah. and done and done. <laughs> That's our role play. And she's blonde. Perfect. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I'm so that. Anytime I'm a blue person, he likes it. I've been blue in a couple things like Miss Argentina. And he's always, he always takes pictures. He only takes pictures of me when I'm blue. It's so funny. Like the one of us as Beetlejuice when I'm in the green outfit. He's just like, ooh, he took a picture of that. There's another one where I was blue. I don't know. I think, oh, my OF video, my music video. There's a blue man in there. <laughs> He loves water. I thought, you know what? When I first saw FNAF, I thought it was him. Because it kind of looks Josh like him, right? Josh Richardson? Yeah. Do they look like each other? No. Josh Richardson is, I guess maybe. It's similar, like, they have very square jaws. For some reason, I looked at it, I was like, wait, this looks like Zac Efron. Josh Richardson is, like, he's kind of a short king, though. I think he's, like, 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, no, not 5'5". Like, maybe, he? like, 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, yeah. Oh, wow. He's little. He's a cutie. I haven't seen him in anything. Except oh, that. yeah. In Never Hunger Games, yeah. Next week, I'm going to be unbearable. After I see that movie. It's Hunger unbearable. Games? Unbearable, yeah. Wait, when does it come out? Fri- uh, Friday, Thursday, This Friday. Friday. Yeah. So by next Monday, I'm going to have a lot to say. I'm oh, sure. my <laughs> gosh. I don't know. I can't. What was that? Oh, my God. Did you see that? He just did like a weird signal to somebody out there. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> It's like subliminal where I like didn't know what was happening. I don't know. It's like, Maybe we don't know there's some things in the Yeah. Things I was like, wait, right what? Around. You've never seen that. You're doing little signals You've to never people seen like that? <laughs> no. It's a gift. At what least did you do? just do? Do it again. Jennifer Lawrence does it. <laughs> it's a it's an honor of the truth. I think that's literally like Girl I hope Scouts. It's not the Illuminati or anything. Like I know, that. that's what I thought. I'm like, who Jennifer are we signaling? Lawrence. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence will know when she sees it. Okay, for real though, I think it's a brownie thing. For real. Like the brownies, the Girl I Scouts. Was, oh, you maybe you're right. Like on my honor, I will try <laughs> to serve God and my country. Is that the Girl Scout one? And to do things by the Girl Scout law. I think that is something. Like, Maybe I don't the know. Catholic Girl Scout. No, it was just a regular Girl Scout. Wait, on my honor, I will try. Yeah, why would we say to serve God? That's odd. That is weird. I don't know. Anyways, um, we'd love to see. Speaking of high school movies, Mean Girls trailer. Oh, Did we talk about this? No, we talked about it the first trailer, but not this new one. The new one's the like extended Rodrigo. with still yeah. no music in it. So I also have tea on this. Oh my allegedly. god! Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly sourcing. So because I don't know, everyone was like, "Where is like the music from the musical?" Me, I they're, was definitely that. I was like, "This is a musical. Like, give us weird. something." They're trying to market it as not a musical. But that's so dumb. So people are going to go thinking like, oh, it's a new Mean Girls. And then the people who hate musicals like you are going to be like, oh, it's a musical? <laughs> and there's heavy music in the Mean Girls musical. It's all music. Like, yeah, it's so weird. It's so They made that weird pivot. I don't know why. 
I don't know why. It looks so dull as not a musical. Like the musical slays, but it look if it's not a musical, it looks dull. It looks like this weird, cheesy, like cheap remake. remake. Yeah. It's so odd. And of course people will compare and be like, oh, this is not, you know, like because it looks it does look bad, but if it's like there's a musical numbers and Renee rap singing voice and all these like great songs, it's like, why would you not? and like the wicked trailer, the leak of it or whatever, by the way, people clowned me for thinking that the trailer was releasing like tomorrow and everyone's like, No, it's fake. Cause someone there's one called like pop bass or something. Oh, and yeah, it's like, it's like a, a fake, parody. Yeah, yeah. I know. And anyways, I thought the whole trailer was coming out for Wicked, but the like there was a leaked trailer that I saw somewhere, and they had like they had songs in it because yeah. it's like that's what it is. It's a musical, so it's like why would you not? It's very weird. Well, what did your source me. say? Why did they pivot? They just I don't know. They they specifically said just like in talking about the movie, they can't say it's a musical. Is it not advertised as Mean Girls a musical? It was originally, and then is the trailer somewhere along the line because originally it was supposed to be a Paramount Plus thing, and then it tested well, so then it was going to be a theatrical release. And then, so it keeps like, they keep cha- shifting it for yeah. some reason. And I don't know why. I really don't know why. Cause, like yeah. you said, I think if they just owned that it was a musical, it would resonate more. I think. Yeah, musicals do well. Like, Mamma Mia does well. Hairspray, like, they kind of do well. So it's kind of a weird thing. And for the people who don't like musicals, it's like weird because then they're going to get tricked. They're going to be like, yeah. It's like a musical. Everyone was upset with like the not your mother's mean girls or whatever. It's yeah. like, oh, okay. it's, Offensive, first it's of like all. if Malibu is going to yeah, go see Malibu's mean girls. One. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be like watching this. It's so weird. It's so weird. It's like, odd. how old do they think we are? I don't know. That is true because it's like you remember Mean Girls. Because you would have and... to be like thirteen, I guess. It was PG thirteen. So right. You're marketing as a teenager. So what? Yeah. It's weird. I'm like all for it because I'm like I love Mean Girls. I love all this stuff like that. But uh, you know, because people are kind of like bashing it. There, I think people are like upset now, and they're just like, wait, what is happening with this? Because it's like there's now there's not musicals. Not that, it's just not like explained right. I don't yeah. think. And the, none of the original cast is in it, which is like so sad. Mm-hmm. Unless it's like surprise cameos in there, but um, I guess Tina Fey because she looks good. But. I love Olivia Rodrigo, but yeah, like it was just weird to put her music on the in the trailer. Yeah, for, when I'd it's, rather hear Renee. Renee, oh, she's like the star of Mean Girls the musical, which is like so weird. I know. And then people body shaming Renee, like being like comparing oh, her to Re- Gina. That was so triggering to me because so it, it just triggering. reminded me of like the skinny culture in like the early 2000s and like yeah. how horrible that was. No, it's so frustrating to see that because she's like, she's probably even smaller than average. Renee Rapp is probably like a smaller than yes. average girl, but it's because she's not like the stick, you know, which is like fine. Like, of course, like, um, what's her name? Reason my abs look good, you know, that's her body type, whatever. But it's like to compare the two, it's like, it's so, ick. especially now because we're all about not just body positivity because I don't want to look at her like she's a fat girl or something like that. But it's like, there's so many mid sized girls now, and it's just like, that's should be that should be the norm and she's about like i said she's probably less than a mid-sized girl yeah. so it sucks to see that and then it's just triggering for everyone that's bigger than renee rap it's just like well geez yeah, if, if you think, think she's a, yeah, yeah then we're just all fat cows and it's like that's and that is it i see it all over tiktok just people being thinking they're fat that's why everyone's on those epic that's why everyone's trying to lose weight and i think renee rip specifically because she talked about how producers when she was like 19 thought she was too big for regina on broadway and how triggering that was for her when she was like so small it's just I don't know. It just it just sucks that people are still talking. It's like so annoying. Like that's what you're talking about is like the bodies. And I saw that everywhere, like the side by sides of them and their outfits mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't know. Whatever you stop talking about it. Like, you know, especially because she's not fat. It's like one thing, whatever. It's just like all the plastics look different. There's different, you know, and that's that's great. That's celebrated. No one says anything about it, but it's like weight is still something people like yeah. talk about. Renee is not even and no she's not even like plus no, size, nowhere no. even near plus. She's literally but, tiny. And but it's we're talking so about annoying. her like she is, you yeah. know? It's like and it's literally I think comparing any anything to like the early 2000s like when literally like so many celebrities had EDs like it was oh. so unhealthy like that whole like literally the fact that we thought that like Jessica Simpson was plus size like oh, I yeah. think about that literally all the time like, yeah she was supposed to be the face of plus size girls. Yeah, I was casted as Fat Jessica Simpson. I'm like, oh my god! When you look back at that, you're like, oh my god, it's just so horrible. And I was 175 when I was casted as fat. I wasn't even fat back then. I was like, wow. And I remember going to the audition and seeing girls that were like, I mean, probably bigger than I am now, like 250 and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, like you're casting me to be like to do the parody, like Fat Jessica Simpson. And I was like 175, and I looked good. I was like, that's wild. It's so it's like that yeah. time was just so yeah. Also Ugh. dangerous. They were taking ephedra. Ephedra would be sold over the counter, like the trim swap pills used to have it. Yeah. And ephedra is illegal now because literally people were getting heart attacks for it. And but I remember I was taking it at thirteen. Like they had the wow chips that would give you like leakage and stuff. It's just like crazy. Like those were what we were marketed, and it was like so unhealthy, so dangerous. Slim fast. Oh, like mm-hmm. the slim fast diet was drinking two slim fast a day and then having a, like a sensible dinner at night. And I was doing that. I was Me like too. fifteen. I was drinking shakes. It's such a messed up thing. And it's so. And it's like now it's like we're still we're still there, but it's almost like worse because it's just like. I don't know. We're like, we're ahead of it. We know what is right and wrong. And now it's just That's like, the thing. That I guess that's what's really irks me with like, because it's like people who say this also know better.
sweater and they also say like, oh, it's offensive if we say this, this, and this. And then they're going like, oh, Renee's wraps a fatty. It's like, yeah. what the hell? I know. It's like so like hypocritical and it's like, uh, I get like not being educated about something, but it's also at this point, a lot of it's just like blatant like hypocrisy and just mm-hmm. like ignorance and that like really, it really bothers me. Yeah. And then you'll see her like do this, like she'll probably go lose a bunch of weight and stuff like that. It's like she probably thinks she like needs to or has to or wants to or whatever the case is. And it's just like sad. You see like everyone, everyone just getting skinnier, like the Kardashians just skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And it's like, geez, like when is it like enough? Yeah. Is it ever enough? Like, I don't think it's ever enough. Like they just constantly talk about body and it's just, it's wild and it makes me it makes me sad. And like that's like another thing that I'm just like, oh, like I am so happy in life. So it's like, yeah, like you said, there's like a balance, right? Like you don't want to feel uncomfortable or can't breathe or whatever. You don't like the way you look. But it's like another thing to it's like, God, I just want to be like happy just like and not think about my weight. And I normally mm. don't, but then you like hear comments or you hear one thing and it's like, oh wow, she's gained weight. Oh, she's got bigger. And then it's like then it's, you just start to think about it. But in my head, I never think about it unless I hear those comments. And it's just like, and that's why I can't read comments. Cause sometimes I will, and I'm just like, and for the most part, people are really great, like, especially on this podcast. Everyone's like, you look so great, Trisha. And they make me feel so good. But, you know, then you see this couple on TikTok and you're just like, oh, my God, what happened? She got so big. And then you just start thinking about that. I'm like, I'm, I am couldn't be happier in life. And then I never think about calories like when we're eating dinner. And so I don't even think about it. And then, like, those comments come and you're like, yeah. all right, I guess I should eat a salad. I guess I should do this. And it's just – it's so – it's so frustrating. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm over – I'm over Rachel McAdams. She's not in anything. She's not in the Walmart <laughs> commercial. She took the notebook roll from Brittany. She, she just – I don't know. Like, she just kind of – I'm kind of over her. <laughs> cancel her. Don't Did we cancel ever, her. Don't cancel her. Did we ever find the happy, the be happy snacks? Did you go to Walmart? Oh no, I forgot about the be happy snacks. I, okay, maybe I'll go. I need oh to go. My God, there's a Dairy Queen. Those. Speaking of food, there's a Dairy Queen next to our Walmart, and it has cheese curds there. I would love a little be happy right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> we watched Not the finale sponsored. of the Demilios because just to see what it's all about. We watched like the last show of the third season. It's wild. <laughs> But wild isn't. It's not wild at all. It's like nothing's happening. Oh. But I. But that's what's wild about it is I'm like I kind of love this. Every time we get approached for a reality show, they're like, "How many characters and things do you have in your life?" They always want like a, a wide range of people. But it's literally just the Demilios. It's like the dad, the mom, and the two daughters, and they really don't do anything. And I say that with like the the nicest thing because I'm like I want this reality show. Dixie never. I, mean, I didn't see them leave the house, and I was like I. But again, we watched the finale, so maybe this is like maybe I'm watching the wrong thing. But she didn't really leave the house, and she kind of just like did everything from the house. And I was like I want this reality show where I never have to leave. So. Also, I'm confused about like Landon and Charlie because I know you said they broke up and they talked about being broken up, but they're also still like always together. I know. I'm confused. Well, I told you like a couple weeks ago, I saw Landon being like, okay, stop speculating about the breakup. I think they're just like on and off. I don't know. That's my guess. They're very young though too. They're like- I don't she know. Said, she says she's going to give it a bit of time and then see if she. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's what we are in the show. Yeah, Charlie. That, well, that's that was the finale. Life, I guess she gave it some time. That was the last episode. Right, right. Oh, so we're caught up as an audience. Is, yeah. Wow, you pay attention. He pays attention <laughs> so good to the things. <laughs> I'll watch it like mindlessly. Like, we're never on our phones watching TV, but sometimes I'm like thinking about other things. <laughs> but you paid attention. Yeah, they were supposed to go to the prom together and it was both their ideas and she went without him. So I think it was his idea. Oh, right. And she goes, well, we're still going to go without you. Sorry. I feel bad for them. I mean, it's they deal with a lot. No, I do too. We had a yeah. whole discussion about that. I was like, oh, like that would be like a lot. Like, you know, everyone just like criticizing. Like, you're so young and you get all these like criticisms. And yeah. And like Charlie, she was saying, she was like, I don't want to just go to college. I didn't really like want all this. And I was just like, oh, man, that kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. Even like last week when like I saw a lot of people say – because when you talked about Charlie, like I got picked up, I was like Trisha didn't even have to apologize. She didn't say anything, which was like nice. But then it's like <laughs> oh, hating on Charlie, hating on Charlie to the def- like just in general. I feel like Charlie has a lot of haters, and be like, what she said was obnoxious anyway. If she doesn't want to be rich, <laughs> blah blah blah, then go work, or whatever. Like quit, right? And it's like, yeah, uh, I feel bad because like just in general, being that young and having so many people yeah. have opinions, and then you feel like no matter what you say, it's like always going to be kind of annoying. Like I still am very like empathetic towards the Emilios, I think, because. It is hard. It's, like, hard and a lot of pressure. And, like, obviously, like, when you make that much money and, like, your whole family is successful, it's, like, you're not – realistically, you're not going to just quit it to yeah. work, like, a normal job. Totally, you know? It's, yeah. like, you're just not. And I think she felt that – either her or Dixie said they felt – I think it must have been Charlie that she felt a lot of pressure because they have, like, a whole footwear line, the whole family. Yeah. So she's, like, I feel pressure. Like, I need to show up for this. Oh, I think they were. I think they were going to an event. Dixie, I think – she like had like literally a seizure before and showed up. I was like, girl, like you just, she had like a seizure that day and she like showed up to the event. I was like, oh. okay. She was like, uh, maybe it was her that said it. She was, I just feel pressure. Like I have to be here. And maybe, I don't know which one said it. And I was like, yeah, like, could you imagine like the success of your family and you know, all this stuff like depends on you and you're 18 or 20 or however old they are and stuff. And I'm like, that's, that's a lot. I mean, again, it's back to the sexiest man alive. I think people under 25, it's just like, they're still somewhat children in the way they're, they're like, 
you know, they're just discovering how to be an adult and like all of the world. And I think it's just a lot. And then give them fame and money on top of that. Like it's, it's amazing. So I always think it's like great when people turn out like Tana, when I see her like turning out good, I was like, you know, she could have gone down different paths too. And people do. And it's just like, that's a lot. I don't know. And if you don't have to do the struggle and stuff, which is like good, like you said, it's good. Like on one hand, it's like amazing if they don't, you know, people like they never worked real jobs. I'm like, well, you wouldn't either if you could, if you could make a hundred million. Um, but yeah. And that's the other sense is like, you don't get that. And I think she was saying that's why she wanted to go to college just to get like that experience, that like life experience, just like kind of normal. I don't know. And it probably will never happen for her because she is so famous. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's hard. But yeah, I have empathy. I think just anyone that's young. Once you're like over 25, if you're still acting stupid, then I'm just like, okay. But Yeah. And I feel like with them, with the Demilos, I feel like it's at least like well-intentioned. And I think they like can, like you said, without just like that life experience, they can come across like a certain way, you that's know? What and it it's is. just because like they don't know otherwise, you know, they didn't have, mm-hmm. have that like experience of like really struggling with certain stuff, like realistic like that middle class Americans, lower class Americans have to like go through, you know? Yeah. So they just don't have that like experience. So it can come across kind of like ignorant or like entitled, but just, I, th- I don't think they mean it that way. I think it's no. just, you know, their like life. The Walmart <laughs> stuff, I'm sure, was just like not their number trying to be. But I also think they just come across, I think we talked about this before. Like just, there's certain people that just like don't come across great sometimes. And it's like, so it's easy to like attack them, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like the fans love them that love them. And then the people that don't, like, you know, they could come across as like ungrateful. Just, just But they probably don't mean it that way. It's like Rachel's like, you know what I mean? There's probably something yeah. else, but something is just a miss, a miss with and her. And I will say it's like interesting that of course it's like the young girls that like have to deal with it, where it's like guys they can go be bros, be bros. Oh, like yeah, you know, XQC gambles three million dollars. Like, but it's like they get to, they have like all the room in the world to like be so braggadocious and oh. like you know they don't have to worry about mincing the words or something. And yeah. it's like, but of course with like the girls, it's like Always. any little thing. You're so right about it. You're so right. With like, yeah, like look at Charlie getting, and she knew, oh, she even says, I think on the show, she's just like, I know that I'll get blamed for this. Like it's, I think it might've been the breakup or something. Was that what it was? And she's like, she was like, I already know everyone's going to hate me for this. I already, people are going to blame me for this. And that was like her biggest thing. And like, it is kind of true. She like got all the hate. Meanwhile, Landon, I think himself will say like, I mean, getting into this drama with these 18 year olds, but like him, I think he was saying that he was the never one to, well, he had, he said he was the one to never break up with her implying that like she broke up with him, yeah. but that he was also like cheated or something was the implications I was getting. So, um, it is kind of annoying. You never see anyone bashing Landon and Landon has a whole song which I kept thinking of the song and it came to me the other day. It was like a song basically being like, I was friends with your ex. You were with him when, do you know the song? No. It's a catchy song. Do you know it? Sounds familiar. I was friends with your ex. You were with him when we met. Guess he hasn't found out yet. But I know he's going to kill me when he sees me with you. It's like, yeah, and she's that. in the video. Anyways, it's the whole thing. So it's like, why are people not coming for him? Like literally being like stealing this, her, like in, according to a song, his friend's girl and stuff. Like, but his if friends, that was Ariana Grande. I, <laughs> that is it. Yeah. Okay. Little Huddy was with uh, Charlie and yeah, it is, it is. It is crazy. Or guys in general, like Stanley Tucci and all these people who've like left their wives when they were sick and like went with their co-stars. And so I'm just like, this happens all the do- time with guys, like leaving their wives or cheating, Jude Law, all these things like that. And like, it kind of gets like whatever. But Ariana Grande, it's like this, homewrecker. And it's like, I get it. But it's also just like double standard. Yeah. And That's also, why I was down this past. The patriarchy was the really patriarchy, acting up this past week. Because I was just like, also like Ariana, it's like, really, once again, you need to blame Ethan because he's in the relationship. Yeah. Like, like he's the one that's leaving his baby, baby. and wife. So uh, it's it's fine. It's one thing if Ariana knows. But it's like, honestly, like if someone cheats, it's like, I blame Moses. Like he knows what he's ruining, not like what? girl. You know, it, like I'm saying it hypothetically. Have to do with Ethan <laughs> and, hypothetically. And Ariana. You're that. No, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> like, no, but Ethan should have not opened that door. No, but for sure. It's no, just like, but, but Ariana gets the heat. Like, oh, she does this to everyone. It's yeah. like, okay, well, the guys are more to blame because they know what they're giving up, you know, and they're mm. losing. But the patriarchy is real because Ken, just Ken got nominated for a Grammy. And I'm just like, wow, wow, the Barbie movie. And Ryan Gosling becomes the star of it. Wild. Yeah. It's wild. How does that happen? And how is everyone just obsessed with Ken? All the girls are wearing the I am Kenef hut. I have one too. The Kenef hut. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. And it's just like, how did that happen? The Barbie movie and all the Kens took over. It is kind of unfortunate. It's a good song and Ryan Gosling is really talented and deserves like his flowers for the movie. But yeah. when the Oscars and all the awards come around, if Margot and like America Freer like aren't also in the yeah. mix, which very well might happen, I'm going to be like That's very gonna salty. That's going to be wild. Ryan Gosling wins the Oscar and like they don't even get nominated. That would be 
freaking crazy. Ryan was great, and like he definitely deserves it. But it's also like without Margot, like the movie would not have become like a phenomenon. Yeah, you know? and without Margot, Ryan Gosling wouldn't be in it. She's the one that like begged him yeah. to be in it. She like wanted him to be in the movie, and he was kind of like I don't know, and like all this stuff like that. So it, it's yeah, it's frustrating. But it's like, but we're all guilty of it. Like we're all like oh, I remember the first thing I said was like the Kens were so good. That was yeah. my favorite part. And it's just like without even realizing what I'm saying, I was like, oh no, we're not supposed to be. I don't know. I think just in general, women will always just be like a little looked over, like a unless you're like yeah, like a powerhouse like Ariana Grande or something like that. Like it's, I think a lot of, like America Ferrera was so good in it, but so looked over. You know what mm. I mean? And Mark Robbie too. It's like she was Barbie, but. I'm sorry, Ken stole the movie. And it sucks. Like, it sucks because it's like, I love Margot Robbie too. Yeah. Mm, it's frustrating. But Did you see uh, Trixie Mattel said Olivia Rodrigo asked to be on her yes. show? And she, did she say no? Did Trixie say no? Trixie said no. She's like, who is this girl? No. <laughs> I love she admitted it, though. Also, I I, that'd be something I would do. I'm like, oh, that, man. That's the first thing yeah. I thought of. I was like, that would 100% uh, be. Olivia's like, can I come on the dish with Trish? No. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely done that to people. We know. I've talked about this. I've definitely done it to people who become big later on. I, my first one, the dish with Trish. Yeah, I remember people submitting people, and I was like, oh, no. I was, like, so mean about it. But, I, but you know, I get it. Like, you know, you, you don't know someone. Like, if Trixie doesn't know this person or something like that. But at least she can admit now. She's like, oh, gosh, please come on. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. And then she becomes, like, the biggest, like, driver's license come out and stuff like yeah. that. You really do never know. That's why I like to interview, like, people who are fresh and new because totally. like, you never know. Even Trixie, like I remember I was working at Access Hollywood at the time and uh, I just really loved Trixie and I, I booked an interview with her like as soon as she was done with with Drag Race mm-hmm. and we were like her first interview and it was, she was like so like small time at the time. Really? She literally just like gave me her phone number to like text her to like how to figure out how to get into the studio or whatever. No it was way. like very much like that. Do you have it in and your that's phone? That's what I was saying. Like Emma Chamberlain too with like at B- oh, you just at my you, apartment. She was at my apartment too. Oh, she was yeah. at Beauty She was in my apartment downstairs wanting to come up. I was like, no. But well, she was 17. That one so. was more <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I know. I think that's like You just never know. You never know. And I, we are, my next two guests are people that I don't think have done any podcast interviews yet. So I always love to be a first podcast interview. I think it's so fun. So that's why I always say like big or small. I saw Theo Vaughn have like a garbage truck driver from New York on and I was like, I love that I want to just interview. Yeah. I get a lot of emails now. People will be like, I work at Burger King. Like, can I? And then, you know? I would actually really love that. I would love it. It's like finding that right. You know, there's an email that'll come, and I'm like, okay, this is the one because I can actually feel. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Did you see the trend on TikTok? Speaking of Burger King, where they do the Five Nights at Freddy, like can't wait to meet you. No. To the- wait, you haven't seen no. it? I'm gonna do it today. They're all in like their Burger King employee outfits, and they're like can't wait to meet you to join the animatronics family. <laughs> you haven't seen that? No, it's in my head constantly. Like I love all the Five Nights at Freddy. Anyway, so we should do. We should plan a FNAF one. I would love. Who would you be? That. I was gonna say the Fox maybe, but I saw um, another girl on YouTube. Do Foxy? Foxy's and she, scary. Like, she like kind of slayed because she had like she like caught Grayson's Grayson's project on YouTube. She oh. was she kind of slayed. Um, so maybe we need a full bunny. on makeup. I was gonna do like a cute little inspired. Vibe. Yeah, I think okay, that's okay, what okay. I would do. I like, like, we're gonna do the full. <laughs> you know, people do the whole like makeup the like bear, and it's so scary. I was like, okay, let's not be terrifying. <laughs> It'll make it cute. See, I think. Yeah, yeah most can be the security guard. <laughs> I seen the security uh, t-shirts. I think they're on Hot Topic. I've been looking for like good merch because those are the merch is like eh, whatever. MatPat, but MatPat's merch, it's like a, it's officially you got this <laughs> the little diner uniform. Yeah, that'd be a slay. You could yeah. be yeah, that'd be everything. You could be Marky Plier as what could have been. Like, what yeah. <laughs> Do you weren't in here for that? Marky Plier turned down Five Nights at Freddy because he was busy with his own movie. Do you know Marky Plier? <laughs> his face is like what? Mm, <laughs> Wait, well, what? I don't, I don't even know his him. Names. What is, what, what I don't know. I don't know how you describe him. He's a low voice and everyone thinks he's hot. Yeah, he's a deep voice. He is hot. He games and does not acts. He's like so Probably popular. Space, but- I literally had no idea what he did. I just always heard Marky Plyer and I was like, girls like him. Like everyone likes yeah. him. Yeah. Harry mm-hmm. Styles is bald. Did you see that? What? Harry, <laughs> Harry Styles is bald. <laughs> what does yeah. that mean? <laughs> he shaved his head? Yeah. Oh, at the sphere. Was he looking at YouTube? Was he watching YouTube? Love that. I love that everyone's going out to see YouTube. This is everything. The sphere looks like it would make me motion sickness. Me too. Right. That was the first thing it's I like thought. Moving. It's a overstimulation mm. too. Like my little ADHD brain, I would be like, 
going wild. There. Yeah, it's crazy. So Harry Styles shaved his head, and people are mad. He's bald. Yeah, people. Do, a lot of people are not happy oh that he's God. bald. Can people leave Harry Styles alone? Like they literally have everything to say about him too. I'm just like I. A lot of people are saying like they don't even want to meet Harry right now in this bald era, which oh is my wild. God. What? And it's like Harry stands. What if he is sick, you guys? Then That's you're gonna feel yeah, real bad. Medical, yeah, it could Seriously, be. people need to just stop. Well, there was. A there was a <laughs> there was a blind item and the sources no. said did this. you keep the blind item last week? Huh? Did, did you I keep, keep the blind it? item? Yes, I did. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe for our members we can do blind items and I'll just be like, no. <laughs> just well, me every week being like, I don't know what this is. There's a blind item and sources saying that like it's for like a new Harry era. It's like what is he Taylor era. Swift? <laughs> Not everyone can have eras now. I'm so over. There's also random people on TikTok that I don't like. No, like they're like, this is my new era. I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm over the eras. What era are you in right now? My Brooke Trishler, Olivia oh Rodrigo era. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Brooke era. I'm in the Brooke my Schofield bro- era. Yeah, my, I'm like, I don't know what. Some, it like altered my brain chemistry, like that interview. Yeah. I, I was like, wow. It was very. Clicked. Yeah, it was weird. Same with me. I was almost like, and I'm not saying this like to chew my own horn, but I was almost like, like interviewing like a little me. Because I was like, <laughs> she had so many of the similar things with how she thinks about like boyfriends and how she thinks it's like the way she's so like attached to things. And I was like, this is like so weird. It's like, it's the one person I feel like I like related to the most. It's like, oh my God, I feel like I'm like watching a little me. It's like, I love so I was living, I was like, yeah. in my head, that's what I'm like, but I'm like, she's just like cute and pretty, you know? And I'm just right, like, right, right. but in my head, I'm like, that's what I am. That's you know how what I mean? feel too. <laughs> that's how, that's how I was like, this is like me. <laughs> Meanwhile, just like gorgeous, stunning, clear skin. I can never. I was so just like, cute. yeah. like random people want it, like sliding into her DMs. Yeah. I'm like, you know, oh, celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. She's, I mean, she didn't even say the names, which there's like hot comedians, like, so she date, like all this stuff like that. I was like, and she, they're like big celebrities. I was like, girl, like everything I wish I had. <laughs> kind of love it though. Yeah, I'm in my brick era too. I don't know what era I'm in. I don't know. I'm in my FNAF era right now because I'm really deep into it too. Like all I'm thinking about now is going to Burger King to do the little like, you know, and just, <laughs> and I feel like TikTok is very welcoming in that community. Like they seem, like anytime, I did a little lip sync to one, not even as a cosplay. And I'm like, yes, you're FNAF era. And there's, I was like, yeah. yeah. there's not a lot of gatekeeping in FNAF, I yeah. think, as from what I've seen so far. Yeah, and if you are, then they're weird. It's a video game about <laughs> animatronics. Like you're, it's so odd. <laughs> Killer animatronics at that. I'm even like reading the FNAF books now. Like I'm really, really? going to. Oh, I didn't to, know there was books. Yeah, I, I'm going to do the books. I don't do video games, but Same, I might the, do books. I, so I'm like, I can't do the bo- uh, video games. So I'm like the next best thing to also like, because I'm so intrigued. I'm like, I need to know Me more. Me too. So. It's so fascinating. It's just cute. Everything about it's cute. Yeah. And just a little, I can't wait for our cosplay. So we have to do a Brooke cosplay. That's going to be all our December. We'll have to do a Brooke cosplay, a FNAF <laughs> cosplay, and then we'll have to do like a Christmas outfit or yeah, holiday or something like that. Yeah, something. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that. I was thinking like, you know, a little gingerbread, but an elf is cute too. I like a little elf moment. We're finally going to watch the Santa Claus this year. I've never seen those movies with Tim Allen and we're watching Home Improvement. I love Tim Allen. So I'm going to finally watch him for the first time this year. I can't believe you never watched any no, of them yet. Never was my vibe. I was like, mm, I don't want to watch this, but I love Tim Allen. I know he's conservative. Don't come from me. I don't know about politics. I don't <laughs> judge people by that. But yeah, I think he's like an open-minded conservative. Because like I told you, he he yeah. believes in January 6th or whatever happened. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Or just disbelieves it or just doesn't think it's good. I don't oh, okay, know. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's middle yeah. ground. <laughs> but, <laughs> what uh, happened January 6th? Everyone <laughs> always uses that as, a, as like a point of reference. And I was like, because people always say that. Like, where were you January 6th? I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways, that's, that's a political show we don't need to get into. As long as you were home. I'm okay. Safe, fine. <laughs> is that what it is? I always hear people saying this. I'm like, just so random. Uh, I was like, oh. Uh, that's iconic. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, we do have like lighthearted stuff or should we get into serious? There's so many serious stuff. Mr. Beast is fake. <laughs> <laughs> in Mr. Beast news. Oh, well, he was kind of like pandering. Like he was kind of like, did you see it? His wealth, which he's like, he, first of all, if you're manifesting that you're going to get like canceled for it, like you kind of <laughs> already know. He's like, I know I'm going to get canceled by it. And so on one hand, I was like, wow, like people are worried about the hide and seek. But meanwhile, he's building wells in Africa. And like, while that's great and stuff like that, Africa, babe, correct me if I'm wrong here. Africa was just like, okay. Cause basically he said like, you know, this government doesn't really do anything for their people kind of calling them out as like not being a great government or whatever. And Africa's like uh, that they're relying on like these handouts from people. And the Africa's like, what are you doing? Like we're helping as best as we can or whatever. So he was kind of, he was doing a good thing. Meanwhile, like crapping on like the government, the country and where she's helping, which yeah. is kind of like weird. It's kind of, I don't know. It was it, beyond weird. Cause it's one of those things yet again, where Yes, he's doing a good thing, but it's also like, okay, but under like what circum, what under what guys? Why can't you just do this without the video? I get it, the video is showing and like helping people, whatever, inspiring people. But then you're also crapping on this like country in which you're helping the people that live there. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So he's kind of getting canceled. He is like... <laughs> Your anti-Mr. Beast agenda is... I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I know what it is. And I feel I feel a little bit of people also getting it. It's like this vibe, this like movement. And I'm like, like you know what? And it's just, it's uh, it's more about accountability. Like, can you do, can you just be the good person that you are now that you're like super rich and not have to put people through, not to put people down, not to put the government down, not put people through humiliation, like squid games. Like, can you just like do, just do you, you know, just be good and show, do being good. And that's yeah. it. I do get it in a sense. Like he does have to like entertain. He does have to like make money to like donate money i get all that stuff i think the big thing for me with mr beast is like i see it i respect what he does and like you know it's having a whole production it's a lot and he you know he's worked hard my only thing with him is just like the criticism like at some point you have to be able just to like take criticism and like sometimes you throw it out but sometimes you you know you see what you can improve Mm -hmm. on and i think with him there's like a wall that's just like so many i guess so many views i do a lot i know that i do a lot of good stuff which he does he does do good stuff but like at the same time it's like you can see there's more like respectable ways to go about some things you know and i think kind of taking some stuff in like absorbing some of the criticism i think that's where yeah (laughs) which i think yeah, because didn't he have, like, a female winner? Someone said, oh, he had a female win, like, one of his competitions, right? Was that recent? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so I feel like he kind of hears some things, but maybe, like, doesn't. But, like, this one, it's, like, he kind of knew what he did was a little, like, shady, a little shifty, and, like, you know, kind of, like, helping people but putting someone else down. It's, like, you know what I mean? Or I don't know. I think the whole thing is a little shoddy. It's a little, yeah. Yeah, I can see it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's good that, you know, more people have access to water because of the wells. That For he, sure. But yeah, I guess, I don't know. It's so dicey because like I get both sides, you know, like I get why some people will be offended and there's like this whole like white savior complex thing going on with it. And I, I can see why people would be like kind of like shifty towards it. I guess at the end of the day, it's good that he's doing good stuff, but people who think that it can, it's black or white, like, especially when you're making so much money, you have such a big business, like obviously there's shades of gray where there's some stuff that can be done you know, more respectfully or more, like, morally, you know, like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Right. So, yeah, I, don't I, say, like, they're reliant on handouts. Like, who are you? Yeah. You know what I mean? If, even if that was true, I don't know the case. I'm not educated on this. But it's, like, even if that's the case, kind of, like, a humiliating thing to say. It's kind of, like, oh, or so just, like, a condescending thing to say. Like, they rely on handouts. So look at me just doing all this. It's, like, okay, just do it. And also there's, there's like, a, it's almost like a PR move, right? It's, like, yeah, somebody <laughs> sits and thinks, okay, what can we do that nobody will criticize? Give water to people in Africa. You know yeah. what I mean? You live here, you know the communities here. How are you not seeing what needed around you and helping people? Yeah, that's true. You know, around here and not just looking for that, um, I don't know. Clickbait. The image, yeah. Right, like Africa. Then, oh, nobody's going to criticize that, right? Yeah, that's so always it's, like, it's like, yeah. It's like it the starving kids in Africa feel... too, which is like there are, but then they're all over the world. But I think it's like so it focused on that. Yeah. Especially if you didn't do it with the locals, like work with the government, with the local, mm. help them in a way that's sustainable. Not, yeah. you know, we don't know if those wells are going to last long or maintained or mm. all of these ma- many things need to happen. Very true. Like the Oprah like with Oprah. the cars. Oprah. The same thing. Mm. Yeah, everyone gets a car and then people all have to take turn their cars or in. Even in Hawaii when the Oprah like, um, was donating, I think she didn't donate it like a, allegedly, a um, <laughs> thing for electricity. <laughs> what? A generator? A generator, yes. <laughs> I knew that one. She donated a generator to like people um, uh, that were affected by the fires, but it was a really old generator that oh. died the next oh. day oh. and oh, allegedly. <laughs> so people were like, well, what the hell? Like, you know. Oh, no. Why so did you do like, that? <laughs> Why did you like, get a new one? <laughs> I know. So it's like, is it like a situation like that, oh, you know, like man. with Mr. Beast? You know, so I don't know. It's like, yes, it's, mm. it's just so, it, I don't know. It's so hard morally yeah. to like see. Mr. Beast well, is a new we'll Oprah. <laughs> like, it's kind of not, like The Rock, you know? Like, Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, Somebody I know. needs to follow up with the wells in like two weeks to see if it, everything two is Two weeks? Still... Wow, they're already falling after two weeks. So maybe <laughs> like a well, year. With Oprah, it was like a day. So. That's true. That's true. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I, like I said, I think he already kind of knew something was a little shifty because I'm like, why would you say you're going to get canceled? Why preface? Yeah. Yeah, like I know people are going to cancel me unless he was being facetious as is like, you know, this is such a great thing that I'm doing where like you said, you can't really argue. Okay, wow, that's amazing that you yeah. did do the water work. I think from his perspective, he is really doing good stuff. Like he, mm-hmm. a lot of YouTubers like when you're that big, you know, I feel like a lot of them like hoard their wealth or like with David, you know, it was just like his friends. Like he's actually, right. <laughs> I know that... Mr. Beast is, like, trying to make a difference, you know, like, yeah. he is trying. So I think that's the hard thing from his perspective. I think that he thinks he's doing great, but it's, like, 
like I said, like you have to kind of be open to criticism to see like what you can kind definitely of, like, do more respectfully, mm-hmm. especially when it's like different countries, different cultures, different governments. Like everything can be done a little bit. His is wild though, and his like I said, his comments are sus. You know, like I looked at the one in the nine hours that had like forty million views, <laughs> and they were all just different languages. I was like, it's kind of weird. I'm not here on just trash. We it's have all authentic, all authentic engagement, for which is or worse, so yeah. cool. <laughs> I just love it. It's so fun. That's why I love doing the live chats. I'm always, I, even if I don't reply, I'm there on the phone. I'm always looking at the phone because <laughs> I try to reply. It's just hard to reply on the phone, but I love it so much. The Trish emojis, all the stuff like that. I can't wait for I you guys. I will say sometimes it's me, sometimes it's Moses, but if it's Trisha, like you can kind of, you're hard to replicate. Like you can tell the way you type is very specific. Like. Oh, right. In the chat. Yeah. They're like, is it? I'm like, no. And also, I'm very fast. I'm like, do you think anyone's as fast as me typing this? I love doing it. What am I? My computer, I can go really fast. Like I'm very quick, and I love to respond to people. I think it's it's, it's my favorite thing. I love a live chat. It's so much fun, and it's so great. And all the Trish emojis. And the yeah, balls. we gotta get new ones for the new year. Just a few, just a few Trish emojis because they're so fun. They're as, so I, we might be able to as we get new members, we get more slots. So oh, is that how it works? Yeah. Oh, please be a member of this channel. We should have done it at the beginning of the <laughs> yeah, show. Be a member of the channel, and then you can be a member somewhere else. We should have members only. We should get members only jackets. Oh, that would be cool. Remember, yeah. like the '80s. Nobody remembers the '80s here. <laughs> That maybe you've got to do. You were a little. Kid. I had a members only jacket, but like that was like what? Five, years, five years ago though. Like Why? A, a, from like a thrift store, but I thought it, I just thought it was a cool jacket. It was. Those were cool. Yeah. I remember um, Jason Alexander and Shell Hell had a members only jacket, That's and weird. I was like, yeah. yeah, it's very cool. Another <laughs> crazy movie for <laughs> body image. Oh my god, that one's the worst on so many levels. In fact, that they got Gwyneth Paltrow of all people to play the fatty. I was like, oh my gosh. All right, we had a little break where we had to go. <laughs> Clean our bladders. I had a couple of M&Ms upstairs. I have to admit that to you oh, guys. I'm jealous. I had a few. Oh, really? I should what, have brought some down. They're peanut butter. Do you oh, like peanut butter? Yes, I love peanut butter. Oh, <laughs> my God. I can bring them down. It's a, it's a big, it's a big reusable bag. It's a reusable oh, bag. Love that. Oh, my God. I don't know. I, sometimes I feel a little bit like a closet eater when I go up there, but it's mostly because I'm like so hungry. So I was like, let me just grab. Whatever's around. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's, I mean, I literally was a closet eater. Last week, Moses came into the pantry and I was like mortified because I'm like, oh my God, he probably thinks I'm sneaking food, which I never, ever do. But I was hiding. I was hiding from someone that was in our house. Not in a bad way. We just like, like we had help, people help in our house and stuff like that. So I was just like, I, did, I didn't want to eat in front of that person. I, I told you, I have a thing about eating in front of people. So I didn't want to eat. But I went in there when she wasn't in there and then she came back and I was in the pantry. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> so I'm just like eating the chips in the pantry. So like a little mouse in the pantry. <laughs> and then I thought, I thought she, I thought she was coming in and we're cool. Everything's fine. But I was just like, but it was Moses and I was like oh, he probably thinks I'm a oh, closet man. eater because you're like what? what are you doing in here and I was, like, and I was literally I mid know chip. What a closet eater is. is someone who eats in the closet literally was me it was very it's normal you were in the pantry <laughs> I was in the pantry just eating I was like okay I, I get weird I don't know like the fact of even getting food I don't know it's just called having a snack in the pantry? I mean, yeah. I could have had a snack like on the couch or something like that. I don't know. It felt That was the first time I felt like a closet eater, which I'm not. Like I used to be and I'm just like that. <laughs> Anyways, and I felt like it just now because it was like a quick bathroom break. I'm like, I'm going to have a few m ms <laughs> I love that you love peanut butter. He does not like peanut butter M and M, so I just oh, thought. Oh really? Yeah, I don't, it's think, I don't like Reese's Pieces, but I do like peanut butter M and M. Oh, that is weird. I right? love a Reese's Pieces. I think maybe it's just the ratio is like too much peanut butter. Yeah, it's just a Reese's tiny pieces. bit of yeah, peanut butter. M&M. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah, I'm not a peanut butter cake. I had a peanut butter sandwich before we started. I had a peanut butter rice cake before we started. Oh wow. <laughs> okay, flex. Okay, rice cake over the bread. <laughs> that does sound good though. I wouldn't mind that because it's really the peanut butter that I like. Yeah, you know, the I bread like a is crunch of the oh, okay. rice cake. I used to eat rice cakes. That gives me very like high school vibes. I used to always eat like just plain rice cakes. Plain, that's extra action. Yeah, me, they taste like nothing in those plain little rice cakes. Yeah, but you feel just like okay, I'm skinny. You feel light as a bird. <laughs> yeah, okay, but it does not fill me up. That's for sure. Pasta fills me up. <laughs> Switching gears, we have some serious stories. I feel like the, we saved the serious. We always have to save it for the end. And it's yeah, like, the vibe I, comes down a yeah. little. Yeah, it's like we want to be silly for most of it. And then, you know, we have to put our journalist hats on again. Our journalist hats. Because I feel like there's certain topics that are, like, so important to talk about. And it's, like, the Kiki Palmer, which we love Kiki. I love her yeah. so much. I want to go on her podcast. Like, everything about her is just unproblematic queen. Always has been. I think she's just, like, funny and talented. Like, I loved her in Grease Live, the musical, where she played Marty. I love her in Scream Queens. I love her, like, in literally everything. I mean, she's been a child star and, like, made it out. Like, she's just always seemed so put together. And then we saw the stuff happen with she had her baby. And we're like, yeah, she had her baby. I think she had her own 
morning show with like Michael Strahan mm-hmm. and that other girl. There was like a girl, Michael and Kiki. Yeah. And I feel like she's just everywhere doing everything. And then she had a baby. You're like, oh my God. I think we love when people are in their mommy era, like Nicki Minaj with her baby in Vogue and Rihanna. It's just like, oh, it's so cute. Like I saw someone say like our mother's becoming mothers. And I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, it was super cute. And I was like, totally, I'm in my mommy era. So it's cool. And then when you see the other people have babies, you're like, oh my God, this is so great. And she had a baby and it was, it, was, it looked great. And then, oh, then the shit storm happened. The worst worst is to me the worst is when you're with a guy that and it's not the girl's fault but you're with a guy and they like what is the word I'm looking like they make you look like a clown like they make you they embarrass you they're like lucky to have you and the guys are just like acting up you know what I mean that's what I'm saying and it's like always and it's always the guy's fault that's what I'm saying it's always the guy in this in these situations where they like whatever her boyfriend the father of her baby what was it eight months postpartum six months postpartum maybe it was only like six months postpartum being like Criticizing her for the way she dressed at Usher. She went out to Usher postpartum. Looked so amazing. Like literally had the biggest snapback body. And it's like so hard to snap back after baby. Like just enjoying herself. She's a mom. She's the breadwinner. She's all of it. And then criticizing her and like basically slut sh- Like not even slut shaming. Just like shaming her outfit. Being like who acts like this? Usher who like it's he notoriously always picks out the celebrities to like dance with and stuff like that. So saying her outfit was all of this mess, whatever. Embarrassing her. People like, ew, we thought they're done. They get back together. I'm like, ah, Kiki, but okay, fine. Like I get it. Like he, whatever. He doubled down. She gets back together with him. And then this happens. The restraining order happens. She follows the restraining order and everyone's like, what the heck? Like, this is crazy. She releases photos, photos of the DV, the happening. And it's so wild. And another reason why I feel like we shouldn't like judge anyone because you like don't know what happens behind closed doors because Kiki is like so unproblematic. Like she's always been drama free, all this stuff like that. And it's like, this happens. She stayed silent about it, even when you were acting like a fool. And then this happens and you find out this was happening behind closed doors. Like there's just photos right now, I think, right? Of the- Yeah, there's stills of, she had like security camera footage. So she, there's just stills of the footage of her, of the DV incident or one of them. One of them. And so there's proof she got- temporary full custody yeah she was granted a temporary restraining order and temporary full custody of their son oh, the temporary is annoying the restraining order the temporary restraining order it's like people can like break those two i mean it has to be pretty serious obviously i mean obviously that's serious but also to get the restraining order to get the meaning like there's no this isn't an isolated incident not that it matters not isolated incident there's obviously like a, a fear a danger where she's like has to get custody of her son and she was trying to make it work she like went back to him and we see that happen so many times with people in these situations and it's just like it's heartbreaking it's so sad it's yeah in the court documents kiki alleges we have to say alleges just because but um kiki alleged that there are many instances of physical violence in, with darius including him destroying her personal property throwing her belongings on the street and throwing her car keys to stop her from leaving and she also alleges that darius has hit her and verbally abused her in front of their son and threatened to mm. k-word himself with a gun mm. if she left him and the court papers also detail examples of alleged harassment and other physical and emotional abuse. Kiki also said that Darius trespassed trust into my home without my knowledge or consent, threatened me, physically attacked me, lunging from my neck, striking me, throwing me over the couch and stealing my phone when I told him I was going to call the police, which is – that's the screenshot mm-hmm. that um, she has – released we always got a lot of people knew that some, something was just weird with Darius like the way that he went about talking about Kiki saying like you know when you're a mother like you don't, the man of the house doesn't want his uh his woman like going out showing off her body yeah and then, then the the man becomes the villain because of that like he was saying all this stuff there was other posts that he was making he was posting um quotes and like photos of this character from a, a show on Amazon Prime called Homelander from the Boys, and the character is supposed to be like a spoof of like super like alpha male, um, super like conservative anti women. It's like it's a spoof of that, but he was quoting the character at like as if he was like taking it to heart, like inspirational. Oh my god! Which oh is my god. really scary. Yeah. So uh, he it's just a lot of red flags, and then the photo that he posted of, of his son, like he posted after oh, all this yeah. came out, a photo of him holding his son. I'll see you soon. I was like, that baby does not have social media. <laughs> and like, it's just like it's feels like very ominous to say that when you have a history of doing all of oh. allegedly trespassing, doing all this crazy stuff. Like, mm, it gives me chills. I yeah, mean, like I, it is. It's very and sad. That's, that's really scary. And I think also to release those photos, like that is also I feel like a almost like a cry for help to make sure people know what's happening. This is happening. This is real. Like, cause you know, so many things can be misconstrued. Oh, like you don't know both sides of the story. You don't all this stuff like that. 
And then when you have a baby, like it just like amplifies things like times a thousand, you know, if he's doing it in front of the baby, if he's showing up and, and yeah, and then posting the baby being like, I didn't even think about that until you said it. Cause I was like, oh my God, that's like, so, cause that's first like, oh, he's just trying to like show social media, like he's a dad or something. But then it's like, yeah, no, like see you soon. It's like, no, you have a restraining so order. Ominous. She has full custody. Like you're not going to see him soon. Yeah. If it's something like that can happen to Kiki Palmer, like it can really happen to any woman. That's you know? what's wild. And you're like a celebrity of all the means, all the money, like security, all this stuff like that. But it's like, it's still scary because it's just like, yeah, it, these, yeah, this kind of thing is like, and it's repeated. It's with the, in front of your child. It's like, yeah. And all the signs are like there, but it's, and it's just sad. It's sad when there's a child involved. It's sad that you have to do this. And it's just, and yeah, and have to prove it. You know, that's also because you just have to put so much out there and it's like, oh man, the whole world knows your business. And yeah. And Kiki, too, like, her brand, like, what people know her for, like, she's kind of synonymous with, like, confidence, you know, and, like, Mm -hmm. very self-assured. Like, she's a breadwinner. She's a hard worker. and Like, empowered, liberated. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. if something like this can happen, like, repeatedly to someone, like, as, like, empowered as Kiki, then really, I think that's, like, the scary thing, you know. Yeah, she's not, like, she's very outspoken. She's not, like, you know, anything and, like, how you would think about. And this is, like, happening. And she, not only that, was, like, protecting everyone back to him. Like, it really does you get sucked into this thing or, you know, especially when you have a family trying to make the family work. And it's, it's so hard. It's so hard to see. Well, should we end on YouTuber news? Yeah. We always have to say that for last year. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> I know we always, every time there's a Colleen in the story, we always like, drag, I know, I know, we hate he, to do it, but right away. I'm just like, Oh, comments like, oh, you know, because she, she has been quiet. I mean, she's, she's, which is what, how many months has it been? It's been since, since June? June. And like the like this like a human aspect because I know her. I'm just like, is she like okay? Is she like doing okay? That's true. Which, yeah. you know, she was shopping at Ross, so she looked fine. She was like- Oh, I didn't know she was spotted at Ross. Yeah, she was spotted at Ross. She was spotted at the airport. So she's probably she oh, fine. Oh, she's out. Okay. But you know, when you do love- Okay, anyways, I'm not trying to defend her, honestly, <laughs> because this is- I don't think it is a cancellation. I think it's a very big, serious, serious issue. Thing. So yeah. on a human level, I hope everyone's okay, but also I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's just like she, anyways, until yeah. like you can acknowledge, Tea, like yeah. you've like really messed up a lot of people. Like, you know, okay, we get it. But I know when I talk about it, I'm like, I'll let it go. But it's whatever. It is what it is because it is. And this is something that I feel like is kind of personal. Like, it's kind of like I have very personal insight to both of this, yeah. the, the situation. Um, Rosanna Pantino, who I love. So I'll just put out my bias there. Like, I love her. I'll always like defend her. She's like really, really sweet. Even before all the Colleen stuff, like she was always really nice to me. She put out a notes, was it? Was it a notes thing on, on X? And, um, which is, which is, I sent her a text. I was like, wow, you know, that I'm like proud of you for putting it out there. Cause so many people, and this was happening to me too. when this all happened back in the summer, which is like literally just this year. It seems like now it seems like forever (laughs) ago. It seems like so long ago, which thank God, cause it was like a nightmare the summer. But, um, you know, so many people are like me too. Like it would, I took me a few weeks, but people are like, you have to talk, you have to talk about Colleen. You have to do this. And I think Rosanna was getting that pressure, which I didn't know. I guess I knew they were friends. I didn't know they're that close, whatever. And I think everybody, Joey, I think everybody was getting like feeling pressure to people are like, they should talk about this, should do that about this. And it's like, I was always on the stance and I still am. And like, no one should feel pressured to have to talk about something unless they're direct, especially when they're not directly involved. Yeah. It's like, I thought Rosanna's statements were great. So she put out a statement and I, again, this is like a timing thing, like give people the time and space because she was a friend of hers. And so she like, obviously in her statement said she didn't know about any of this, didn't see any of this stuff. Um, and was waiting to see if there was, cause when you know someone you want to hear is what's the truth? Was this the truth or whatever? And, um, she, you know, in her statement was saying that she, she didn't get a response basically being like, you know, none of it was true. Um, Basically, she was told, like, none of it was true, which is what I was being told. And then to have all this stuff come out, you're like, okay. So she she took the time, and then she has, you know, also to not f- pressure people into not talking when there's, you know, when they're not ready. Because if you don't know about a situation, if you don't know the full story, like, it is, like, a lot to pressure someone to talk. It's, like, with an indirect thing. Like, if I did something messed up, and then they're asking you for a statement, wouldn't you think, like, oh, let me ask Trish about this. Let me see what she's saying. Let me see all this stuff like that. You know, like, I know Trish, and, like... You don't want to try and get the full story. And sometimes you don't know people. Sometimes, you know, I you could keep bodies in a freezer and have no idea. And you're just like, oh, well, I had no idea. Yeah. But it takes time to figure out if that's true, if that's whatever. I could be lying to you and be like, you know what? That's not true. There's no bodies in the freezer. And then, like, bodies in the freezer come out and you're like, oh, shit. Well, and I think that's what happened 
with Rosianna, and we don't, we've never talked to an extent about this. It was very in passing at like a birthday party or something like that. And, um, it was, it was very much that it was very much like, is this true? And calling me like, no, no, no. And then like stuff coming out and being like, okay, well now you like lied. Like, and I will say Rosanna of all people is when she says she's like open-minded, she really is like the most open-minded person. I mean, she's like friends with me. You know what I mean? She's very cookie cutter, all this like image and stuff like that. And she's, she's very like, she doesn't judge people. She's just like not that person. So I think she was like waiting to figure out like what's true. Is there a response? What are you gonna say? And then when she got lied to, I think that's when she kind of felt the flip where she's just like, oh wait, this is not a person that I thought that I trusted because they lied to me. And I think when someone breaks your trust, then you're kind of like, okay, how do I deal with this? And I'm surprised she made a statement at all because it is like, it's been so much time has passed and things do, people forget about things and whatever. And I'm kind of surprised she made the statement at all. That's why I texted her and I was like, I'm kind of proud of you for putting that out because you didn't have to. Like, you know, a lot of people stay silent when things come out. It kind of just like, there is, you know, you, you, you're not hanging out with that person. You can show by time, the distance and stuff like that. But, um, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty good. And I, I liked what she said about not pressuring people either, because it's like, sometimes if you just don't have the right information, speaking too soon about something can like hurt so many cases, it can hurt the people involved. Like, I don't know, because if a big creator comes out and is like, she doesn't know the situation and she's like, what did people want her to say? Denounce Colleen. Okay, that's one thing. But then it overshadows other people talking. If she like says she supports Colleen or whatever, you know, a big creator can sometimes like shadow or take over what's like really happening with all these other people talking and stuff like that. So I don't know. Sometimes I think it's just like noise in all of it. But um, I, was, I was shocked. I was shocked she said something because I don't think people should feel the need to have to, especially because I think she made it pretty clear she's like doesn't support it support Colleen anymore. Yeah. But to come out and like say that and like make that statement, that's, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, especially because no matter what, it'll be looked at as drama. You know what I mean? It's like, it's drama no matter what. Like me talking about this now, oh, it's drama. Oh, you're still bringing it up or whatever. Um, Even if it's just like, I feel strongly about this and I want to make a statement about it. So especially coming off the Mr. B stuff and her getting so much backlash from that, you know, I was like, wow, it's amazing. She, she still put out that statement and felt compelled to. There was obviously something in her Cause even when she was here, like I didn't want to bring it up. I, like she never asked me not to. In fact, I think they said that they would have like talked about her and stuff like that. But I, I didn't want it, our friendship to be that or that's what it's looked at. Cause we were friends before all that happened. And I don't even think we all, I don't think I ever saw her with Colleen. Like I don't think I've ever hung out with Rosanna when Colleen was there. So it was never like that sort of situation. So I just, I, I don't know. I, I like that she's saying what she wants to, you know, say and you know, some people, some people is like not good enough either. It's like, oh, it's too, it's too late. It's like, yeah. is it? It's first of all, it did just happen. And I think even if you say something five years later, it's like, it's still, it's still making a statement. It's still making a stance, which a lot of people don't do. And, and I'm not saying they have to, but I do respect people when they can like make that stance and be like, this is wrong. Especially in the case of Colleen, I was just saying, oh, I hope she's okay. But then I'm like, rethinking about everything. I'm like, I don't know. She really diminished so many people's, not only diminished, but basically called people liars. You know what I mean? And that's to me is like, okay, it's not, it's not lies. It's this. And mm. so I don't know. I thought it was, I thought it was a good statement. I thought, you know, it's a big move considering you were friends with her and you like supported her. And then like sharing those little tidbits of like, you know, I tried to reach out to her to see what was true. And I don't know what her exact words were, but she like, sadly, I didn't get like a response that I wanted or something, but it's not like I ever associated Colleen and Rosanna, like, Me a, you know, yeah. so it's not like I ever expected her to speak out or say anything. It's great that she did, but I never like have that expectation or felt like, she, like I, me as someone who's like, as a viewer ever like was entitled to Rosanna denouncing it. Cause also yeah. just like knowing Rosanna's character, it's like, I know that any of that stuff, especially when it comes to like children and stuff, like she's, she has like nephews, like she's very maternal. Mm -hmm. Knowing her character, I would know that she would not obviously like support that kind of behavior anyway. Right. So I guess I, I, it's like one of those things where it's like, I'm happy that she did it. Like, it's great that she did it and that she said her stance, but it's also like, I hate that she was, I felt like pressure, like bullied into it. Um, and it's, I, once again, it was like, I know like what channels like were when she was coming out talking about the Mr. Beast stuff. It was like, oh, you can say this about Mr. Beast, but you can't say anything about mm. Coley. And it's like the channels that were like very much like persistent on her saying something. And it, once again, I'm just like, it's a lot of men 
wanting women who were ever associated. It's never like the straight men who were like associated with Colleen or whatever. Right. You know, it's like, it's all Smosh collab with Colleen. Why is no one knocking on Anthony Padilla's right. door? My Mythical Morning collab mm. with Colleen. Why aren't Rhett and Link, you know, being held to the stakes? I get I get very yeah. frustrated with that stuff too. Cause it's like, cause even with like gay men, like there can also be misogyny with gay men a lot too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I hate that Rosanna was like pressured into it. I'm happy that she said her statement. Like everyone knows her stance, but it's like I wish it was like on her own terms. I guess is my that's like, the hardest part. Yeah, with it. that's how I felt with mine too when I had to like finally come out when all the like pictures of me were posted and stuff like that. Because it's like it's not like I was never ever going not ever going to, but it was like we were like such fresh friends. So all this stuff happening before and all this drama, like I had to keep, I had to truly catch up on it because like I really had no idea. So it's like always like this windstorm, and then you are talking to this person that like you think that you know, and they're like saying all oh, this is not true, which I think is what she was saying to her, like Rosanna. And so you're just like, okay, so I'm not going to talk on something if this is like not true. And this and like, and it's, it's, it's a lot. When I tell you like everything so was messed up. And, yeah. Like, it's just like, it's really that first like few weeks, it was very, very overwhelming, especially when you know of someone or have the idea of someone. Mm-hmm. It, it's hard to sort through what is real, like what isn't. Cause you have, I mean, you had people like Johnny throwing a lot of shit out there too. Of it course. Was like- and some of it's like, okay, this is a lot. And like, what's, what's, what's real, what's facts, what's your, what's your feelings, what's your emotions, what's, so it's like feeling all that. And then, yeah, I did feel like forced to say something too, because then now my pictures are involved and I'm like, oh my gosh, like if this is circulating and then these are sending unsolicited, or this is like harassment and like I'm being involved with it. And it's like, okay, now I got to say something. And I just was not in the space to say it. I was sick all, I was sick that whole month, like physically sick. And then I was like, just not doing well. And it was just like so much. So yeah, like forcing someone to say something. And then when someone does say something, it's not good enough. And it's just like, this is why people don't say anything. And it's why I didn't say anything. Cause then it's like, well, Trisha, you're also a bad person. So it's like, okay, this is why I didn't want to say something. Cause I'm not one to like, you know, condemn someone. But then I was like, well, without really realizing the severity, I was like, okay, what she's actually doing is wrong and is criminal and all stuff like that. So it's just like, it's just a lot. And yeah, I think I think a lot of people just, I don't know, need to give people a little break on the internet because it's like she, what one person does, like other people don't need to make statements on it. You know what I mean? It's not like, it's not your responsibility. It's not his responsibility. It's like that person's responsibility. Yeah. So it's like deflecting all this stuff when it's like, Colleen's the one who needs to take responsibility. Colleen's the one who needs to say something. If she can like send me an apology email, like she can do an apology video. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, it's it's wild. And every time I had seen her since, I really we really didn't talk much about it but just very briefly yeah. and i will say even like the vic like some of colleen's victims too said like i don't care what rosanna has to you know it's not like i don't care about ro- what colleen has to say yeah. you know so it's Th- like but that's it it's yeah. also like it's not just like an us it's also like people who are actually affected like the kids who were victims are also yeah. thinking similarly too so it's like i don't know i feel i feel bad for that rosanna in that situation but and also i'm just like okay Colleen, eventually Colleen needs to, I'm like getting sick of it. I'm like, yeah. girl, six months, No, almost. it's crazy. It's crazy to not say anything. It's like, she will, she, ha- she has to come back. Like she just will. And it's like, I don't know when people disappear for a certain amount of time without like saying something before you disappear, like I effed up. I'm going to just like take some time. I, I literally, at least. If- a little closure for people. Like, okay, she knows what she did is wrong. So she's going to take time off. The, your last statement on this whole situation is I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser. Yeah. You're wild for that. Yeah, yeah. You're wild. Wild. Very incorrect. It is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I All of this. I'm just like, wow. Like, just acknowledge, like, this is a big F up. And, like, yeah, everyone can come back. So, like, if you say that, like, everyone come back. But when people just disappear and then they come back, like, a year later as if nothing happened, it's, like, that's Girl, annoying. If she just was, like, you know, I – if she just owned up to it and, like, said, I'm going to go seek help or, you know, something like mm-hmm. that. Like, and she went – and this whole six months, we thought she was just like working on herself, right. you know, like yeah. it'd be a very different perspective, I think. But I know we don't have that. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird when it gets like, like this, you know, when it gets brought up again and you're just like, oh my gosh, like it is. Cause you do, th- cause you do start to think like after a while, you're just like, oh, hopefully they can. And then you're like, oh no, actually they're like kind of a, and then you hear it from like a close friend where like she also was like lied to. And it's just like, why, why are you lying to like the people in your life? Like there is, there is a problem, right? Like you're lying to me, you're lying to your friend, you're lying to all this, like, oh, it's not true. It's not true. And then like being exposed to this, it's like, and then her response to me being like, oh, I'm just a coward. And it's like, well, no, like there's issues. There's a problem. Like I asked you, I think both of us, I think Rosanna, she was 
was very like, I'm very open-minded. Like, just tell me like what happened. And she's just like, none of it's true. And then there's stuff that's true that comes out. And it's like, okay, it's issues. And then you're also blaming, you're also blaming the kids. <laughs> you're like, they actually, because I just remember, again, not to break this up, but her being like, no, I remember I asked so specifically, like two weeks before it came out, out. I was like, oh, like people are saying, you know, you sent these photos oh, or whatever. Yeah. And she's like, no, they would send me photos of you. And I was like, oh, that's so weird. And I would kind of be like, okay. I'd send like one word back. But then like, it's that's what's like the crazy part of the psychopathic part because it's like you were literally doing this like she flipped it around on them and was like no they were sending it to me and I was like okay I don't want to see these to blame kids <laughs> is wild oh my god it's crazy and I think that's why it's still so hard it is like no matter what like I don't think about it like on the daily like I used to but it is one of those things where you're just like oh, once you start your process again like it's totally the same I'm, yeah like once I really was thinking about like how she left everything off I was like right that is actually banana like yeah you're just kind of sick. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, and your family's still on social media. So it's like you think you'd want to like try to make it a better platform. So they're just like not constantly getting harassed. Yeah. And- like I can't imagine what like Rachel's comment section is like, you know, like I'm sure the she Ballinger must have- family, like you're, you're have a, your family has a family channel and you're going to like leave them hanging to be, I mean, I give it to them for keep posting. I don't know. It's kind of wild. I'm just like, I would be, I would be bad. I'm like, say something like. <laughs> Yeah, because now you're, like, bringing all of us down. And they're complicit because they're, like, if not I, saying anything. If everyone in my comments was a predator protector, I'd be a little salty. I'd be right. like, girl, get in front of that camera right this second. Exactly. Because I would not be able to take it. Yeah, and they shouldn't have to because they are staying silent on it. And it's like, okay, this is one of the things. I think at this point, I'd add, if I was one of them, like, the sibling I'd, or relatives, I'd just be like, I don't support this. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, That's her, honestly, not me. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to, just, like, they're not going to do it. You're just like, okay. You can love them from afar, yeah. Afar or or closely, just not publicly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. I love Rosie and I love this era of Ro. She's um speaking her mind. Yeah. And I like that. I like that. I like that she doesn't even after the whole Mr. Beast thing, like not she doesn't feel scared or like silence. Yeah. Like, oh, I shouldn't say something anymore. I think she's she's like adapting and she's learning because she posted that and then that was it. And that's yeah. the way that's the way you gotta move. You yeah. gotta just Post say your and done. speak your piece and yeah. then Post your little outfit of the day the next oh, day and yeah. keep it moving. She looked good. She's going to Diwali at she, Lily Singh. She has abs. I'm oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. God. She's looking she legit. Slays. She yeah. slays for sure. So that's how, that's how you got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Never, don't look at your mentions, girl. Take a note from me. <laughs> Never look. Your like, mentions are good. People <laughs> love you on there. I know. I know. I try not to. I don't know. It's been good lately. Like I said, at least I, maybe I'm not seeing hate and it's wonderful because <laughs> yeah. I can watch. I can read all my comments now and everything is peaches <laughs> and cream. Knock on wood. The beasters. Stay away. The beasters have been at bay. I don't think they've been coming for me too hard. A little bit on Twitter, but nothing crazy. Sometimes I get a little wild on Twitter. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I shouldn't tweet this because I don't like to be in drama on Twitter. Save for the podcast, but sometimes I'm like, let me post this. I don't know. <laughs> I just love, I love, I love the For You page. So when I see stuff, I like, I feel adamant to like respond to it or something. I don't know. It's just like easy to. It's like, I'll just tweet. I don't know. Twitter's making a comeback and I like it. All right. Is that it? I don't know. I want to keep talking, but I guess that's all we have. I know. Let's just keep going. Okay. We'll see you guys next time. On Just Trish. Mm. Bye. Can't wait to meet you. <laughs> Johnny Animatronics family.